Guys, welcome back to the Charles Ogan Experience. James Cooper, what a pleasure to see you. How you doing? You okay? What a pleasure, James. What a pleasure. Thanks. Why do you look so insincere? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you look so insincere? I, I didn't mean it. So. Yeah, he did, exactly. Gents, we're going to learn from our mistakes right last time. We're going to make sure we have the, the, the microphone nice and tight and close. Right, to right close to the mouth. Right close. Right, right close to the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Like a how about, fellow. How about the mic? Some of it. The mic will also have close Yeah. So, James, welcome to the podcast. Pleasure to have you on. We've known you for a while, obviously. Um, James runs a successful gym in Hampstead, one of the best PTs in London, no doubt, and nutritionist. Tell us about your gym, James. What's going on there? So yeah, we started, I've been a PT for around 10 years. Um, opened my gym about three years ago, just before lockdown. Obviously not the right time, but it could never be the right time anyway. So our gym does very, very well. Yeah. Um, PT only. Amazing clients, amazing space. And I think Charles, Charles is kind of on the same path as well. He, the best way I've always said is actually getting results and looking after clients. And yeah. you know, that's the most important thing. And that's not to sound like a good dude. I'm, not, I'm a dreadful person. But in terms of business, yeah, you're, I, you're I horrible, treat people horrible, 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 horrible pivot. Well, when someone pays me, then I'm lovely to them. So yeah, so um, yeah, our gym's doing very, very well. Um, very, very, very good space. Really good environment in there as well. Like every single client, I can honestly say that is someone would want to be friends with, they're all, all decent guys. And whatever you give out, you'll get back as well. And that awesome. sounds like an innuendo already, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is an innuendo. It's already begun. It's already, it's already, it's already yeah. begun. So you, you, were, you were working at Gymbox before that? Yeah, so I started PT um, at Gymbox Bank yep. um, in got about 10 years ago. So I started freelance. The best way you know Charles is exactly the same. With anything, you have to work the floor. So you have to basically be on the floor freelance at first. And you learn all the mistakes, all the correct things. And you just have to have a full diary first is the first thing. Yep. Too many people, Charles, want to open their own space um, before they're full. They think if I open a space, I'll become full. It's the opposite. You need to have a space, be full, and then yeah, think, yeah. you know, this is the next next step, I think, as well. Mm. What, what, what did you do to get a full diary when you're working the floor at Gym Box? When you say working the floor, like, what were you doing? Working the floor. So, basically, um, hanging around the men's change rooms, mainly. <laughs> cruising. I want to call it cruising, the showers. Working. Cruising. In We're the, working, working the floor. In the sauna. In the, in the, <laughs> you're sitting in the sauna all day. <laughs> My, um, no, being serious, you need, you need to basically... Um, chat to everyone most people um so think about this right so if you're f just friendly polite to everyone mm -hmm. there'll be a point where someone realizes themselves that they don't know what they're doing smart people will the kind of clients you want will realize that themselves and they go actually that guy james when they want a pt they're going to go with someone they're comfortable around yeah, so yeah. the first person i'll think of the person the person that ha spent time with them not asking for not asking money off them except just having a nice conversation with them and saying whenever you need help come up to me. And that's the biggest thing you can do. It's like the, the DM thing we are talking about earlier with online. On your Instagram, the best way is basically to start a conversation with someone, have a chat with them as well. Mm. Don't ask them for anything, just ask them about the trading, ask, ask them about how everything's going. And that's pretty much it. And that was definitely the best way. And then get results is the yeah, best way. Yeah, Fair play. Play. Nice. yeah. Free samples. Free samples. Free samples. Oh, free samples. Don't, 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 that's another chap. Free samples. <laughs> you can get your product for free because it just devalues your product. It's true. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. yeah, that actually... Little well, sample there here and there. You can, you can, but it just depends on the level that you're trying to get to. Are we talking well. about PT or are we just talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so I, didn't, I, didn't, I was going to say some like supplements or steroids, but I thought you were literally just being weird. I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's like yeah, yeah. sample of anything. Yeah. Say like a, say like a free session. It's it's like if you're you starting out a PT, whole it, session, it, huh? Not a whole session. No, but just like a, if you're starting out as a PT, just yeah, the it's tip. A good, just the tip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, like it devalues your service as well. It does definitely. People yeah. that people that um. Uh, our businessmen, which most of them are at Jimbox Bank or work in the city, you know, in banking, uh, banking, um, they'll see, they'll devalue you and see you as a low a lower product by doing that as well. So yeah. if you, I would never. So you have your own business, right? I would actually not want someone to do something for free. I actually, when they do it for free, actually for me, that um, means the product quality is lower. Yeah. So funny enough, when you know, way, way to say it is, you know, when you get something, you buy, I don't know, say face cream, face wash, whatever it is, right? And there's massive differential on how, how much something costs. Yeah. You're probably going to go mid-range because you want it to be reassuring and expensive. Yeah, sure. If it's mm. really cheap, you're going to think there's something wrong with it. It's, it's true, isn't it? Literally, you're going to think it's crap. It could be exactly the same and you'll still go for the one that kind of costs mid middle ground. Yeah, as well. No, no, I'm fine again. No, I'm fine again. You're sitting there going like, <laughs> not, not me. Lidl. Think about the meat quality at yeah, Lidl. Yeah, Lidl. Yeah, Lidl. <laughs> Lidl has excellent meat quality. Hang on. This comes from a guy that actually wears Greg's pants. And literally- and I, socks. Yeah, I don't know why I can see him in his you pants. Get, we you get free favors at Greg's if you wear the underwear. Is that actually true? Yeah, trust me. Really? That's, yeah, that's trust what actually happened. Trust me, bro. Trust me. The, yeah, and he walked, basically wears Greg's underwear, and I said to him, 
They're unbelievable. And he goes, they're meant to be ironic. I was like, I don't think they are. What's the I, don't, I don't think they are What's ironic. The irony? The irony. Well, they were actually sausage roll underwear. So it was double layered. Well, that's two layers of irony. They had one thin layer of cotton. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Be- beautiful. I need a pair as well. So you've been you a should. black belt for how long now? Almost uh, for 10 years. So ten, ten, ten whoa, years. you've been a black belt for yeah, 10, 10 years. years. Yeah. So actually, Charles said the other day, um, he has 10 years jiu-jitsu experience. It's actually about 19 to 20. Because I'm so rubbish, he thought, well, it can't be, <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that long. <laughs> it can't be that long. Yes, I'm. I'm not. Think about this. I've known you for ages. Literally, how long have you been training jiu jitsu for? Uh probably like seven years or so. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so I yes, yeah, so I started I back in 2005. I think it was 2005. Holy shit! Mm. And you were the youngest black belt in the UK. Uh, the yeah, when I, when I when I got my black belt, so that was 2013. Wow. And yeah, I remember really clearly the first day I walked in there. Roger was. Um, Late for the class, you imagine. <laughs> Came no. in, it was like, yeah, so I remember he was 23, he just won ADCC. Yeah. Um, and now I'm literally nine years older than him back then. He was, he was a kid, right? It's cr- absolutely crazy. Wow. Yeah. Why did you start? Um, why did I start? I think the same reason most people do um, crippling insecurity. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 not talking. No, being serious, I was into, always into martial arts. I think all, all kids are growing up, all, all I think. Pretty sure boys are. So I saw the first UFC. This is a proper throwback that Owen will enjoy. I used to play UFC, the UFC game on the Dreamcast, the Sega Dreamcast. Holy and shit. yeah, so he won't, you won't remember it. He's actually I too don't young. Have that. He was busy playing RuneScape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wanking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do both. Well, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, so I, I basically started watching UFC. I think Tito Ortiz was back the champion back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I saw actually you know, the biggest one was Frank Mir was heavyweight champion. He just beat um, Sylvie, Tim Sil. Yeah. yeah, you remember that Tim Sylvie broke his arm, and his style was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then I started watching oh, what's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I remember really clearly Charles, this guy from my school. Um, his brother was doing. So I remember this really clearly. Well, basically, this guy was about the smallest person last year at school, yeah. and I had like a play fight with him. and He beat the shit out of me. This was when I was about twelve, right? Yeah. And he said to me, "I was like, what the fuck was this?" And he goes, "Oh, it's something called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu." And I was like. He goes, oh, my brother does it. He does it in a place in Labrador Grove, yeah. in Kensal Road. Yeah. And he has a little bit of a rough area. Now it's beautiful around here. Literally, there's <laughs> three gales, a planet organic. Yeah. It's brilliant, literally, yeah. as well. I feel safe. Four Waitrose. But, um, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Bakery exactly. smells. I love it. 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 Yeah, which yeah. depends what you like. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, so, so anyway, so he told me about it back then, and I kind of ignored it. I wish I started back then. Yeah. But anyway, then I realized where to do it. So what happened was... I need to learn this martial art Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I yeah. thought this is the top martial art, right? So I was in Selfridges back 2005 and I saw a martial arts illustrator magazine that had Roger on the front, actually. In Selfridges? Um, in Selfridges, oh, yeah, wow, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was in Selfridges, martial arts illustrator and WH Smith downstairs and I saw it and I said, um, Roger Gracie is in London. I was like, what the fuck, you can come learn Jiu-Jitsu in London? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I basically saw, saw this picture and I was like, I need to find out where this is. And it was in Kensal Road. Remember the first academy, right? Yeah, yeah. I saw this and was like, I need to go and learn this. So basically, I took, took a bus there um, and start, start from there. How, how old were you at this point? Uh, I think, four, what's your, 15? 15, 15, 15, wow. 15, yeah, 15 back then. And were you a big big lad? This yeah, also, I was quite strong. I was strong back then as well. I was more chubby and fat, but I was strong. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And then I remember the first class, Charles. So I went in there and this guy, Gerald Ash, you know Gerald? No. Taxi driver, yes. Yeah, so Gerald, is a, so he's a black belt, maybe now fourth down black belt. Yeah. He was a purple belt. I remember this quite, yeah, probably about 80 kilos guy, literally as a taxi driver. I remember just him beating the shit out of me. Me thinking, <laughs> thinking in my head, thinking in my, genuinely I was thinking in my head going, I can't even fathom I thought I was actually tough, and I just like I can't do anything you, at all. You realize pretty quickly how fucking shit you are. When yeah, you yeah, start. yeah. No, no. In, and I think Charles, the biggest thing people when they go to jiu-jitsu is you have two types of people, right? You have the kind of person that goes, everyone gets beaten up. So you have one person that goes, "Fuck, I'm not as tough as I am," and you want to learn it. Or the other one goes, "That never happened. Oh, this isn't a street fight." Or they'll go like, "Joe and me joke about it all the time." They go, "Not like not. Well, I win a street fight anyway. When I see red, it's all over." <laughs> that, that kind so of good. Just close when your eyes and when I see red, bro. Yeah, when I see red, when I see red, it's all over, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much slip knot. <laughs> just Fuck. expect bodies yeah. to hit the floor that's the point so you got f- shit kicked out of you like I love this yeah it was a me- yeah and I was like I need to learn this and I just loved it literally as well so um, how many I, times a week did you do it after about that three or, three or four nice. three or four yeah three or four consistently for a long long time as well that's and it. I've always I've had you know, injuries etc but I've always trained you know, three or four times a week minimum yeah, yeah. you're very consistent with your training yeah it's consi- consistency like I think biggest thing people I'm sure you know this with your, your gym and Owen knows this the people that become good at anything, it doesn't matter whatever it is, business, training, the main thing is they're consistent. 
You have to fucking show up. Yeah, show up. Literally, days you don't feel like, just do it. Literally, and you don't have to train as hard. Just go and go and do it and turn up every yeah. single day. And that's the way to do it. It's a big key for jiu Yeah. You know, just turning up just every day. Even if you take people who sit out rounds as well, just show up and lose. Yeah. If you, if you try, <laughs> just that's lose. true. He's right. No, but you know what? Owen's completely right. You have to. The biggest thing, the biggest common denominator in anything, is having a massive ego to improve, but not a but not but not a not a massive ego to win. So if you turn up and actually you're basically learning something each time, so it might be you pull off a technique that you wanted to pull off, yeah. or literally something didn't work, and you go, oh, "Why didn't this work?" You've improved. Yeah. Beating someone up who's smaller than you isn't going to really help. Except, I mean, it's fun as well. And yeah, it's true, it is yeah, fun yeah. as well. And you do feel dominant. Really yeah, fun. Yeah, it's great. It's really, it really fun. But it depends yeah. if you're hitting your moves as well. Like, if you're just fucking bullying the fuck out of them. That's, that's even more fun, that's, right? That's even yeah. more fun. But it's like, if you're hitting, like, your moves, like, I'm only going to try and do, like, yeah. a try. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, how true much can that. you really benefit from sparring with a white belt if you're trying to, like, half the time the moves you're doing they're not even going to give you the correct reaction for it. True, so like that's you another may one. as well just enjoy yourself and bully them. Yeah. yeah. And also, is that with an <laughs> erection or without an erection? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, it helps, doesn't it? That's the problem. <laughs> I need to know that. Exactly, yeah. You're running away. Wow. Or you've just come and that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> and it's so When did you start lifting weights then? I love how you moved on to normal topic. <laughs> <laughs> so We can come back to it. It's about C-U-M. Awesome. Uh, um, when I start lifting weights, I started lifting weights when I was 50, 14 or 15, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and that was playing rugby school. I just wanted to get strong. So uh, Charles is actually pretty similar background. You lifted weights for sport. So I genuinely wasn't to look good at all. Um, I lifted weights to get strong as a byproduct, put muscle on. So I just wanted to be strong. Um, I remember watching World's Strongest Man, actually, with my dad when I was about... Razi's putting Yeah, thing. yeah. It, well, it must have been like eight or nine, literally. But all, all kids, doesn't matter who you are, all boys are fascinated like, with uh, being strong. How, we, we'll, yeah, how can I get big and strong? Yeah, of course you are. Literally, you either you either admit that to yourself, you lie and pretend you don't care about it, right? So, um, yeah, I've always always lifted weights for a long time, and then basically started jiu-jitsu when I was fifteen, and kind of stopped playing rugby around seventeen. Yeah, yeah. But also boxed um, around twelve to sixteen years old and stopped because of jiu-jitsu, basically. Yeah. yeah. When did you start taking weights a little bit more seriously? Like when did you start putting <laughs> up big numbers? So by by the time I was probably around. Uh, I would say 16, 17. I was strong. By the time I was 17, I was benching 180. That's fucking yeah. solid. And, genu- and generally, that, that that was, yeah, 180 and deadlifted 260. After yeah. how many weight sessions were you doing a week at that point? Uh, four. Four, four sessions. Same, a week. same as now, really, four times a week. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So it was like two legs, two two upper body? At 16. At 16, yeah. Yeah, Jesus. yeah. And, 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 gen- and gen- generally, that was completely natural as well. And people will go, like, it wasn't. I was just strong. But, you know, but a lot of um, yeah. top end strength. Charles has seen the school clients. Is very genetic. You can get very strong. Everyone get very, very strong. Yeah, yeah. Every single person get fucking strong. But there's a level of strength that literally is quite there's, genetic. There's quite genetic. Off, and there's a pretty sharp cutoff period for some people. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, 100? About 100. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 kg. Okay, that was a pretty huge 16 year old. Yeah, that's so big. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say 180 on the bench? 180. I deadlifted 260, 270, and squatted around, I think, 220. 180 like on the bench is so heavy. Yeah, it's just for, I, I yeah, can't even imagine three. that. That's the weird thing is I can't fathom. Like, I think wasn't just wasn't as injured and wasn't doing jiu-jitsu. That's yeah. another thing as well. So yeah, jiu-jitsu fucks you up. Fucks you up, literally, as well. Yeah. Also, benching 180 doesn't help. <laughs> doesn't help Doesn't help your pec tendon too much as well, yeah. No. And I, I actually just loved it, literally. I just really, really enjoyed it. I think that all of us here kind of, it's sad, but you know when you get older, like, you still love training, but you know when you're 17 or 18, we fucking love going to the gym. We go with your friends and yeah. take a pre-workout, all that kind of stuff, and, you know... I miss that, but I don't have that anymore because obviously you have all your work commitments, etc. But yeah, I miss yeah. being on that when I was younger. Yeah, I remember, th- remember those days. It was so fun at 16. You just fucking show up every day. And like, you'd be sore, but you're like, ah, fuck it. You just exactly. so fucking exactly. quickly. Question for you, actually, because yeah. high-level strength coach, do you think, I was talking to B- Little Joe at Jiu-Jitsu. So Little yeah, Joe peace. is fucking good at Jiu-Jitsu. And he yeah. literally, people always thought he was younger than me, but actually he was older than me. He just looks very, very young. Yeah. Um, but being serious, and he was talking about, he's 32 or three now. Yeah. And we're saying, I was saying I saw him, I think it's age. And he goes, do you think we're just always sore when we're young? We just ignored it. I actually think a lot of it's just us getting old and going, oh, it's because I'm old. I actually, you always saw it. You just ignored it when you're younger. You just oh. go fuck when you're younger, I think. As yeah, well. I, th- I think there's, there's, there's a fair bit of that as well. Like, I remember, you know what I mean? Literally, yeah. Yeah, like some of the fucking mm. athletic like things we had to do, like fucking when I used to play like rugby, the sprints and all that kind of shit. You'd wake up, you're like, my legs are so fucking sore. They'd be like, get the fuck out. Just like, do it anyway, get the right? Fuck out there and you get exactly. it. Exactly. There's not injuries though, and it was much less. I feel like when I got injuries when I was younger, it would literally recover overnight. Yeah, like I would hear a pop in my knee, and the next day I'd be, uh, it would, it would have recovered. Yeah, it's yeah. A recovery, it's a recovery yeah. time from injuries. You're right, recovery is a lot faster. But also, yeah. like, fuck, like some of the high level rugby players I used to be able to school with, like, 
looking back on it now, the fucking injuries they had. Like, so many of my friends had shoulder reconstructions at like 16. Yeah, eight, you forget like, about that. Yeah, reconstruction. You forget about it. You're like, holy shit. Imagine you're getting now. a fucking shoulder reconstruction. Like, rugby's a fucking gnarly sport, man. Rugby's yeah. the worst. Rugby's because the, the, worst. The, the, the speed you're hitting each other at as well is very different. Jiu Jitsu, to a certain extent, you can't actually control. And I think you can roll how you want to, but rugby, you can't. Way more. You but, can't. Well, I, I guess, like, like, look, if, when you get to a high level, you can fucking. You can. You, the game changes, right? Yeah, you can be a bit safer. You can be way safer. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Now, if I have injuries, I can literally work work around it without without just having terrible jujitsu. Like if my foot was injured or something, like before, I would just keep getting foot locked again and again. If my foot was injured, nowadays I can just avoid getting foot locked on one specific leg by doing, you know, changing stance or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, you keep yourself safe. That's the thing for like white and blue bots. Like you, they just get you're gonna get injured at some point. There's so yeah. things pointing their toe. People pointing their toes like outwards make <laughs> make me fucking cringe. You well, see that all the time. People dream. are kneeling and they point their toes like out. Oh, that's really like, good for like knees. Dub double you sitting. If they whatever. fall over and their, their foot's the, just gonna go. Yeah, yeah, and their knees, their hip sort of collapses inside there. <laughs> just oh. like. And they're always like the most skinny. Like, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They are pointing their toes out for base, and then they, yeah. Oh, we know what you mean. Now I know what you mean. Yeah, now I know. Yeah. Now I know. Always what you mean. with the sexual innuendo. Yeah, I know exactly. Like, I'm just thinking about the <laughs> two guys in <and>, uh, <laughs> the change room. I don't know. What you're so you, so you're like already strong and athletic when you started jujitsu. Yeah, so I was strong, strong, pretty strong when I started jujitsu. How much do you think that helped your jujitsu being strong and athletic going in? A lot. So I think one of the biggest things that people say, I remember Rogers back in the old academy, said, someone said about strength not mattering and he goes, Shut up. Yeah, and he goes, if you, you say strength doesn't matter for jiu-jitsu, then I've done jiu-jitsu before. Yeah. There's a line. So what's the biggest thing? I always ask people this, who started jiu-jitsu for the first year. What's the first thing you notice when you roll with a high-level black belt? You go, how fucking strong they are. That's the first thing. Not even a technique. They feel like a wall. So it is important. Just when people say they're not strong, they may not be strong in the gym but their mat strength is strong. But also to add to that, I mean, if your technique's good, you'll feel stronger because the leverages are better. Sure. That's also true as well. But it's grappling. Like, what wrestler or any other martial art except for jiu-jitsu would give you that bullshit and go, strength training doesn't matter? Akira. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. Real martial arts. Real martial arts. But yeah, like, you know, in grappling, so judo or wrestling, yeah, they're not going to tell you you don't need to lift weights. They'll be like, what are you talking any about? Any grip strength. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Absolutely There's can't fake grip strength can't and it's like even like even a white belt if a fucking like 120 kg white belt comes in you're going oh fuck it's so hard it's so it's difficult so right and they're even more awkward because they move so strangely as well yeah, yeah of course shout it's out difficult. to our friend Mark McQueen again yeah, oh yeah. my god he's, he's, he doesn't well, move awkwardly he moves no. with grace yeah. grace oh my god but that's it, like being fuck strong. Like look at that guy, strong as fuck, just destroying black belts now. Yeah, because he because he's le learned simple stuff and done it well. But also he, he's a quick learner. You can tell by his attitude. You'll probably see on the podcast. I chat to him a lot. Yeah. He's got a good attitude of learning, isn't he? As well. Yeah. That's the biggest thing as well. Like he's very, very smart. What he does. He achieved a high level at powerlifting. He obviously had to be very, very um, disciplined. Disciplined and have to take a look at something not working, etc. That's a and fucking hard sport by powerlifting. Well, you know, well, he, he lifts he has disgusting, literally disgusting. Yeah. But like going to the gym, and being like, I'm tired. It's like for strength work it doesn't fucking it doesn't matter you, you have, have to you have, have to, do to do lift it. heavy weights so that's it, the only way you get stronger and be scared of it every single time you do it as well, yeah. well, well when's he coming on he's coming to train actually um, with me as well perfect yeah, uh, yeah, well. Um, two weeks two, is it two wow, weeks two okay. weeks yeah two weeks wow. that's gonna be fun nice, nice. Yeah. it's gonna like be fun 11th. it's not gonna be that fun but huh 11th 16th Cool. Six yeah, that's that's a good point. Being scared of like lifting heavy shit. You lift fucking heavy shit. Not so not not so much anymore. So every time I go into the gym, Charles, I'll do something now that I know. Touch wood. Um, uh, I won't get injured because I, I'll basically I'll do something between eight and fifteen reps. So we talk rep ranges for people for jujitsu. I yeah. notice when you train them, you do people. I go, why do you lift between? 8 and 15 reps. Yeah, safety. Let's get into that, yeah. It's, it's safety, exactly. So what do you, if you're, say you're lifting, I don't know, you're benching um, 8 kilos for uh, for 10. Yeah. If you're benching 100 kilos for 10, you've got stronger. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter that's in a higher rep range. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You're getting stronger. So I think you have to look at the risk versus reward. Unless you're a powerlifter doing one rep max, it's better just to stay away from those. You can still be heavy, but something can control for more reps. Definitely. Yeah, there's way more room for error in that in that one to five rep range. Yeah. Way more if you if you fuck it up. And also it doesn't translate as well for jujitsu. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You need to you need to be strong within high rep range. Of course yeah. you do as well. But if you think about like reps of like five to ten, it's like you get a good hypertrophy stimulus, you get a good strength. Well, like both. You get both. Five, five fifteen, you get hypertrophy, you get strength. strength. Also you can strength. move the bar fast yep. and with like Speed. the intent to move it powerfully which will help power yeah you, you build, well. build, 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 build simulate hypertrophy you're gonna 
they build muscle endurance. You're not going to injure. It's going to make the joints bigger, stronger as well. And also, you get, you get stronger anyway. So, what's the point of risking the low, the low, low, the uh, low reps? That's a big thing, like joint health as well. That people often forget about. Like, just think about muscle. Like lifting weights actually helps your joints, bones, massively tendons and ligaments. Yeah, exactly. Like, if they're strong, that's going to be much more beneficial on the mats. Yeah. Even like your recovery from like injuries now. Because I feel yeah. like because you're stronger, you recover Yeah, just faster. my knees, just having strong legs. Strong quads, right? It's for, we know this from knee, knee health, right? In general. Yeah, basically the first thing you do when you get out of ACL surgery is strength, get the VMO switched on. Have to. Yeah, you have to. When it switches off, my knee pain comes back. When I start doing it again, then fine. Lower back pain. Too. <coughs> if I'm not like lifting, like doing leg weights, my lower back is fucked. Yeah. I get so sore. What do you what do you do for that kind of course? Your, well, your I got a belt. I got a gym. I got a belt squat machine there now. That that's helped a lot. But like all, all the core stuff, um, t- just lifting, just fucking moving. Did it, like belt squat, some split squats, um, bench, push pull. Same I, as I, I do it. Yeah. I, I like to use. I, I think our, our programs are very similar. Is that the same? Pretty I, much. I, I, don't, I don't deadlift. I don't squat just because of the, because I've had a back surgery. But I use the belt squat. I do like an RDR. With a, like well, there a you go. Five. Hip hinge and a squat pattern. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Like. Uh, uh, push pull vertical horizontal exactly the same but, but I also like machines I love like lat pull downs and oh they're great This so I've gone good. back to them it's really interesting so people one of the biggest questions I get asked actually all the time machines. is what do you think of machines and actually yeah, they so can massively beneficial of course yeah. they can be you, on, did you yeah it's exactly the same as I'm sure you're going to say but also what it is is you can actually first of all one of the biggest things you can get someone who's a complete spastic comes in the gym <laughs> it's true you can put load of them so actually the reason why a lot of very high PT students are ultimate performance they mainly or raw they use a lot of machines because someone can't form the they can't do the form properly but also they can't uh, create tension so they don't actually hit the muscles properly so what they'll do is they're all over the place like a, a marshmallow man yeah. so what happens is they're actually not hitting the muscles anyway but when you're fit in fixed position you can create you can create the force properly Yeah. but also even for an advanced lifter as well it batters your body less as well that's another thing over time. You can get the basics in, but also hitting some volume with some uh, machines is going to hit the muscle rather than just damp- mashing up with joints after a while as well. But it's a nice split to have. So say like you do pull-ups twice a week as an example and you lap pull-down once a week. It's a nice way to get it's the exact, It's exactly exactly what I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not just saying this agree with you. It's exactly what I do. I'll do a lap pull-down as a pull-down machine. I'll do um, uh, chin-ups the other day. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly it's perfect. Because you like a big thing for jiu jitsu is like uh, uh, you did a video about this the other day. It's like oh, exercises and that. It's like what's the target muscle groups you need to use for jiu jitsu? Did you just work those target muscle groups? What kind of rep ranges? We already covered that. Like uh, what are the energy systems? Yeah, you'll cover all of that in five to fifteen rep ranges. Yeah, of course you do, and exactly fucking and movement patterns as well. So exactly, you need to go through. I think people ask what's the perfect program. Charles, exactly the same. So we will list it really simple. So you do. I say twice a week because people that do jiu-jitsu, if you want to get good at jiu-jitsu, spend more time doing jiu-jitsu. So, and you can still get fucking strong by doing weights twice a week. You don't need to do weights four times a week. You just don't. So it's most people do. It's you. actually worse. You'll actually recover less. Do two proper sessions and that'll contain one day will be a hip hinge. So be, it doesn't have to be a deadlift. It's basically a hip hinge that you can do without causing injuries. Yeah. Right? So that might be a trap bar deadlift. It might be a RDL. And then the other day with squat pattern, that would be a barbell squat, front squat, safety bar squat, belt squat. Just anything you can do safely, basically. Yeah. I think people get surprised when they see your deadlifts. It's like, fuck, he's lifting like 260 kg. Surely that's too heavy. It's like, yeah. it's all fucking relative. It like, is relative. That's still some, doing 12 reps. Exactly. For someone who lifted, I don't know what the fuck, like 350 kg. Yeah. That's not heavy for me. Actually, it's yeah. not going to be that 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 taxing for you. Correct. Yeah. So that neurologically, even it's not that tiring. So I'll do. Say if I do do sixty, um, I've the most fun in the three hundred for nine. I think it was. Um, Recently. So, yeah, and it's like a little while ago. It's bigger. So. Um, yeah. At the video as well, because I remember actually not wanting to do a video. I make going take a video of this because when you're old and injured, you want to show people. So people ask you, "Have you got a video?" I go, "Actually, I do." Exactly. Um, but yeah, so but yeah, because of course they do. When you're old, you have to, you have to vi- seriously video this you stuff now. Prove it, yeah. yeah, you're gonna be old one day, literally. Old yeah, exactly. And then yeah, exactly. <laughs> I send them to I Owen every so often. He goes, yeah, exactly as well. Owen usually wanks them as well. <laughs> Tommy as well. Um, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah the candle. <laughs> take, okay. He takes a scented candle out as well. Get close to that microphone. Yeah, yeah. You're too far away. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so we said before, so like a hip hinge, uh, squat pattern, horizontal push, horizontal pull, vertical push, vertical pull. Do you hit, split, the, do you hit the single legs? Do you hit the split squat? Yes, and split squat. So bo- that can be anything. So a Bulgarian split squat, a lunge, or a, a front foot elevator split squat for beginners. That tends to be a little yeah. bit easier. Bulgarians tend to be difficult. I do them, but a lot of people can't do can't do them properly hit, yeah. yeah so and then um and then put in ab movement an ab roll out or leg race um yeah with some core stuff 
usually the core stuff you can do as a warm up. So Charles does a lot of um, what are they called um, dead, dead bugs, bugs, dead bugs, bird dogs, all that sure. bird dogs. Yeah. But um, in terms of that, and that's it. And then if you want to put some arm work in, you do one or two movements, like a tricep and a bicep movement. Yeah. And I think that's it at the top of my head, pretty much. If you fit those in, those rep ranges, and just get stronger, and just get stronger at those movements. Stick to one movement and get stronger at them. I was even telling one of my guys, he's like, like you don't understand this. You got busy guys who work and whatever the fuck. They're like, fuck, I can I can only fit one session in for like the last five weeks. Yeah. And they're just doing one session a week. It's yeah. like that's fine. Like, you can still get stronger like, than that. Don't, don't like, and this guy's like a former power lifter. So yeah. it's like, look, you don't need don't don't beat yourself up. Like during that one session a week, you just go a squat. So you go squat, an incline bench press or a bench press, a pulling movement and a hinge movement. Maybe some arms done. That's done. That's enough. That's, you'll still get strong from that's that. That's enough. Hundred percent. You'll still get week. strong, or at least maintain. If you're already strong, you'll definitely maintain your strength. So to get well, people ask to hit how many times do you hit a muscle group a week to build muscle tissue the most op yeah exactly yeah he knows already top of the head so the, the most optimal is actually hitting a muscle group twice a week that will build the most muscle tissue but you need less volume to hold muscle and you can still build muscle once a week but also if you do think about this right the people get confused in their program when they go okay so you're only hitting that muscle group once a week. With a split, with a full body program like we're doing, you're hitting the muscle group twice a week anyway. Yeah. So when I say twice a week, I mean say you're doing an incline press and another day you're doing a shoulder press, they're both hitting shoulders and they're both hitting upper pec. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, that is twice a week, basically. They have massive crossover. Yeah. Or you're doing um, an example, maybe like a, a pull up or, or, or a dumbbell row. Yeah. You're, you're hitting a biceps twice a week. Yeah, exactly. And you're still gonna hit the lats in both movements. Twice a week, exactly. exactly. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Nice. You got the questions, don't you, as well? Oh, yeah. yeah got questions. Are check, they, are they right, not? Let's check some questions then. Oh, I'm worried now. So, all right, first one was ridiculous, but where can we find a podcast? Guys, well, that's a good question. Why, why would we even answer this on the podcast? No, no, you have to answer this. Yeah, because they won't find it. They won't find it. That's it. So I'm going to actually do a soundbite. I'm going to get, get it. Oh, good. Okay, do that. Every, to the every, okay. every start, start of every podcast. Good idea. People. It's on Spotify, the Charles Ogan Experience. Um, Remember, you need to like, subscribe. If you want to, the, the, the more the more popular we get, the more cool guests we can get on. Yeah, and clearly I'm low down on the list. We're starting off with free guests. We're starting off desperate to be able yeah, to yeah, exactly. Ch- Charles Hogan Experience on Spotify, uh, YouTube. It's there. I don't like. Yeah, people no, should I mean, know. I, I, yeah, I thought I thought that was anyway. There's no point answering it here. Cause you won't see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. It's so true. Oh, well, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So beautiful. Anyway. You'll never, you'll never know. You'll we'll never know where to find it. We can talk about him here. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. What a cunt. Yeah, <laughs> you'll never know. That's okay, yeah. Question. And we've already done this uh, two or three. Day, is that actually, maybe not a good two or three day gym split to go alongside four to five times a week. PJJ. Oh, we really basically did. We did. We did that already. Really. That was like a full body so someone's saying they bulked 6 kg now they get gassed all the time whilst they're doing jiu-jitsu yeah i mean James good question that's a good question so um when you say bulk I think charles is going to say the same thing how much of that six kilos is muscle tissue how quickly did you put the weight on yeah. so the quicker you put the weight on the quicker your body sorry the, the, your body will probably not be adapted to that extra body weight second of all even if it is say it's taken you say i don't know who you are but say you did it over four years and you've actually genuinely built up quality six kilos muscle that extra muscle will need extra oxygen so the best way to get used to that body weight is to still this is, i'm sure this is a really good answer and charles said the same thing is to make sure you're rolling while while putting that weight on so your body gradually adjusts to that weight if you're still doing conditioning and you're still sparring while putting that weight on you'll be used to that condition so people yeah, sorry, i was gonna say as well no, people yeah people say to me they go they always go, aren't you too big to do jiu-jitsu? First of all, we look at the top guys who are fucking massive. But the point is actually as well, and on lots of <laughs> lots of drugs. I but, didn't say yeah, that. you just smart, <laughs> smug, smart. We'll, we'll, we'll get into drugs. We'll get into, no, don't we'll get into drugs, it's fine. But um, so what it is is basically because I've done it while I'm doing, I put all that muscle on while I've been doing jiu-jitsu for my whole life. So your body does get adapted. The best way to be functional for sport is to do the sport. And I would say, to, so the, to answer your question is, I'll just make, make sure you get back on the mat. Because you put the weight on already, um, it's basically get back on the mat and do as much jiu-jitsu as you can while, while maintaining that body weight. 100%. I've actually forgotten that there's, um, Mike Zutel put up a good, um, like, chart almost. Obviously, he's, been, he's done his fucking PhD and this mm. kind of shit, so he's the most 
Or like got he's amazing. Talk he's about this. Yeah, yeah. He's um. He, he did this chart about how how much muscle some people can can put on in like in less than a year or so. It's like some person like what like at the shitty end, like one to two kgs of muscle would be awesome. At, that, if, like that's quite a lot. I was gonna that's say that's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot. lot for like shitty jeans. Proper muscle. Then it's like up to like super athletic jeans. It was like ten kgs. Oh, so people can twelve kgs of fucking muscle. Is that drug? Free? I was gonna say is that yeah? Was that being serious? Is that no, no. Drugs? Just, th- this is drug free. This is ridiculous. This is drug- on eight. This is joke yeah, for he, well, he, he put on like eight well, kgs in a fucking year. Well, it's the thing people I joke about with um, with Owen all the time. People he makes jokes about, it, but generally Owen is drug free. So people don't understand. He generally with proper training, eating properly, correct weight training. The reason why Owen puts so much muscle on is because people train like fucking dog shit. Go to any local gym and watch people weight train. Mm. And the way they eat. They eat like fucking garbage and they don't sleep and they eat shit and literally lift weights dreadfully. 100%. If you train correctly, not even that fucking hard, just no. correctly and progressively. Twice a week. Right? Twice a week. Correctly. <laughs> correctly twice a week and eat properly. Charles is going to say the exact same things. Four protein feedings a day, some veg with it, and some healthy fats or carbs, depending on what you're doing. Done. Simple, not complicated. 100%. But you can put huge amounts of muscle on, but people just don't do that. And it's just managing cool. the progressive overload properly. Yeah, actually sticking to weight for a bit and then actually putting weight on when you're ready, not going. Yeah, how do you put, that's the question for you because I'm actually genuinely interested. How do you progress weight? Say you've got Owen doing three sets of 12 on uh, split squats. How, say he's doing uh, 20 kilos each hand. How would you progress that? Cool, it's a good question. So like how, how he started, we he actually started doing like 12 kgs. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, it, whoever I have in the room, like beginner, like as, when they come in fresh, I just assume that like, we're just gonna go through the lightest things possible, just so you can get movement. the movement. You need to get the good technique. The weight will come, learn how to do movement properly. If you don't learn how to do movement properly, your movement's gonna be shit. If your movement's shit, you're not gonna lift any fucking no. weight. It's not gonna happen. So like how I do things with Owen, I, a big thing I learned, especially listening to like guys like Mike Isretel or Chad Wesley Smith, is like don't get fucking greedy, especially at the beginner phases. The, all that weight is going to come. So like a classic thing that I took, I, I I made many mistakes with is like, okay, cool, we did twelve point fives this week. I'm going to try seventeens or <laughs> yeah, you skip all the steps or twenty fives next week. Yeah, yeah, and then you're like, fuck, that was so hard. You've gone from like RPE five to RPE ten. Ten, yeah, you, yeah. And it's yeah. like, okay, cool. Um, mm. we did twelves this week. Next week, we're going to try fifteens. So we're going to go fifteen, fifteen, fifteen. Week after, maybe we'll go. 15 17 17 the week after maybe we'll go 17 20 20 or if that's the it, like that's why ip is good because he may come in absolutely fucked from a session and seven say he did 17s last week at rpe 8 and then he's coming come this week and 17s is like rpe 9 because he's fucked okay okay cool we can we can just either keep so small coach does time yeah you need you need to work within how fucked you are for the session just because you have something written on the board, you're like, oh, I need to hit this. Like, we're not fucking powerlifters. You don't need to, if you're a powerlifter. That's all they un- do, it's if different. You're, if you're a powerlifter, unlucky. You have to fucking lift the weight. And that's all they do as well, it's different as an all. All they do, yeah. But if you're a jiu-jitsu athlete, it's like just, you can take the small wins. So it's like, even even just get like a split squat, 20 kgs. Let's put a few more reps in. Let's say you did three sets of eight last week and it was fucking hard for 20s. Let's go for three sets of 10 this week. Then the following week, but we'll go back to three sets of eight for 22 and a halfs. And let's let's progress that way. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I would do. Say you have a rep range of um, eight to twelve. What you'll do basically is say you're doing twelve and a half. Is once or I say to clients is once you hit three sets of twelve with perfect form, you hit the top of the range. Then go back round again, and then say you, on the next weight you do fifteen. Don't put the weight up by more than the smallest increment possible. Always put it up by the smallest amount you can do in that gym. So 100%. two and a half for dumbbells or two maybe barbell one point two five each side, and then just stick to it. Don't don't literally go up. 10, just don't do it. There's no point. Even if you could do it that week, don't do that. Doesn't matter. You need to be obsessed with progression within yourself, not what, what other people are doing. It just doesn't matter because I promise you this, you will always overtake the guys who are greedy in the gym. You always will overtake them. Because they'll get injured. Because they'll, they'll get injured. Or they'll stop their board or get injured or it's too difficult and they won't go in. Because, because you can adjust how you, it's really interesting one, no matter who you are, how mentally tough you are, you have days where you're exhausted and tired and don't want to do it. Yeah. If you know genuinely you can go in the gym and if you turn up, you're not overly harsh on yourself, go, you know what, today, as long as I get one step for the way I did last week or whatever it is, we'll get some sort of easy win. Yeah. and you're easing yourself, you'll always will turn up. If you say, fuck, I need to literally hit, you know, this, this set, at least five more kilos this week, you're not going to turn up some days and then you don't turn up and that adds, that's three weeks later you're not turning up at all and then you've 
stop your progress completely. Pressure of performing. Pressure of pressure performing. What about the gym? What have you set the standards of performance so low? It's always a win anyway. It's always a win. 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 Just make sure you manage expectations. Yeah. It's so low, it doesn't matter. You could also get like technical wins. So say like Owens comes in. Sorry, I can't. Sorry. You could go for different angles. A technique. Yeah, but it's true. candle. <laughs> you could like say like Owen comes in and he's like fuck I just did an hour and a half with Silvio I mean that often happens he's <laughs> his lower back yeah, exactly. what about yeah, <laughs> what about the jiu-jitsu or is it, or is it, it's just red perfect it's just anal right <laughs> yeah exactly it's just yeah, pure anal yeah. and he's come in and he's like I'm fucking tired my lower back's sore it's like okay cool like we're not gonna crush the deadlift this session but like maybe we can get some other wins later on As you, because sometimes you walk into a session absolutely fucked and then as the session yeah. go, goes on you're like yeah fuck yeah I'm actually really starting to feel good That's and another then you one. start benching better or like yeah. like let's say the deadlift we'd be a bit more conservative let's look, let's look at getting some movement wins in can we adjust your technique so the movement feels a little, little bit more efficient mm -hmm. and that's obviously gonna trans carry over to the, the session when you're healthy session. Oh, yeah. Say again, yeah. Session yeah. after session with better technique. So when you feel better, you have a better technique, etc. You're gonna lift, you're gonna lift better. Also, different different sessions make me more tired in different ways. Like if we're wrestling, I feel like, for example, the deadlift would be much harder, but then the bench press would be much easier. And then vice true, good point. Yes, yeah, good point. The whole time, the bench press is fucking hard by the end of it. And for sure, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah, <coughs> we've had that many times where we've come and the deadlift hasn't been. Like it's been the same, and then yeah. we PB on the bench, or we PB on a dumbbell row, yeah. or even we PB on a split squat. So you just need to keep, yeah. like, for, for judo athletes, you need to keep that in mind. You can't win every fucking session, and also, like, the the goal of strength training is to like it, each session needs to be progressively harder because to, to build muscle, mm -hmm. but that doesn't have to be harder by a whole lot. No, which people no. get confused about. Yeah, like putting 10 kgs on a, on a, if you're already like an intermediate phase, which like, to be honest, most people know it's a bad example, mm -hmm. but if you're at a beginner phase, you could probably expect to put like 10 to 20 kgs on your deadlift in a year. And that's mm. huge. Take That's a huge win. Mm. But if you try and do that over like a two week period, it's not gonna fucking happen. No, no, just no. Be, just be like kind to yourself. Use, use the 1.5 plates or use the 2.5 plates. Yeah, well that's another one, exactly what we said before, the small wins. But when you're, when you're tired, like we said, the main thing to take away from it is, don't be so harsh on yourself sometimes. Some days you are too tired to, to do that. You know who's really good at our wrestling coach, um, Andrew, um, who actually um, Owen introduced me to his incredible wrestling coach, by far the best, I mean, incredible coach. Yeah. What he'll do, because he, know, Blunt, he knows I do a lot of training, I'm mentally tough. He knows I'm not lazy. So he'll literally ask, what have you done today? And I'll be like, this and this and this. And he goes, okay, today we'll just do technique. Or I'll come and I go, I'll be honest with them, like, I haven't really trained today, I've just done some technique with Owen. And be like, oh, cool, we'll do some sparring. So you, you have right. to adjust it and be honest with yourself as well. You have to adjust the sessions. Yeah. Big time. So He's next question. Good. He's very good. Yeah. Cool. Next question. Uh, let's skip. Anything eight hours of sleep a night can't fix? This is from Mark McQueen, by the way. Shout out Mark McQueen. Shout Once out Mark again. McQueen again. <laughs> uh, oh, go for James. Had some strong. eight hours of sleep a night can't fix? She's That's talking, actually... talking about drugs. So <laughs> <laughs> no. We, <laughs> well... No. Even, even so, no. No, no. Yeah, but, 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 but actually, yeah, but actually, yeah, so this is really strange. Charles and me talk about this all the time, where clients will come in and ask about what the new supplement is, what what this recovery mod modality. And there, loads of supplements are great, and loads of recovery modalities are amazing, but there's no better recovery than sleep. So, and like you said, there actually isn't anything eight hours sleep can't fix. So, say 19 of the time when you feel fatigued, it's most of the time, you know what, even train hard, you sleep. If you genuinely came in, see, so some days you've already knackered. Yeah. If you slept really well that night, you probably still wouldn't feel tired. You'd feel sore, but you wouldn't feel tired. That, do you yeah. know what I mean when I say that? Yeah, you feel sore, but not tired. Deep tired, tired yeah. <laughs> so only people who do a lot of jiu-jitsu like us understand we feel deep tired. It's literally like the thought of even any kind of movement makes you tired. Yeah. 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 That's that, a good point. Because soreness and tired is different. Like if you, if you sleep well, you're like, I'm fucking sore, but you can still get up for it. If you're yes, fucking yeah. tired, I'm like six to five hours sleep. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh God. No, yeah, I can't think of anything worse. It's more mental at that point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's more, more mental as well. Sleep is the number one thing. If you, if you, all these other things you do, literally, I'm not joking, even taking, taking gear, taking steroids, honestly, sleep still is the number one because you won't be able to perform if you're, not, if you're tired. You just won't be able to. It's not possible. Yeah. No, 100%.
Yeah. At least take a lot of drugs and then you can. But <laughs> no, but even then. But even then. Yeah, actually, still your body needs to sleep properly. It just does to recover. That's when you does. get all the growth hormone and testosterone exactly. proper releases. Unless you're injecting all of it. But <laughs> 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 then who needs, the gro- who needs the release when it's just there? <laughs> yeah, that's take the, more gear. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one professor told me once. <laughs> actually, actually, <laughs> was actually an endocrinologist. <laughs> why, why, why release it when you can just uh, inject it? How, <laughs> how do you deal with, like, when you, co- when you go to the open mats and, like, let's say you've had, like, five or six hours sleep or less how do you deal with this play god you play god i play god yeah just just counter counter just focusing all my energy and not getting injured like literally my whole the only thing i'm concentrating on whilst i'm sparring is try and get as many submissions as possible don't get injured yeah and (laughs) that's basically oh if if i'm like staying tight bro if if i'm uh, i'll speak super loud if i'm moving i didn't mean this uh yeah if i'm like if if i'm feeling really fresh then I'll stop giving a shit about injuries. Like if I've slept like 10 hours, let's say, and I slept well the night before as well. Also, yeah, that's another thing. Normally it's like the night before if that night. To stay in time. The night before <laughs> that night tends to matter more than the night before for me, yeah. for whatever reason. Anyway, uh, yeah, if, I, if I've slept a lot, then I'll just train as hard as I want and I, and I will be pretty confident I'm not gonna get injured. But yeah, as soon as it gets to like six and a half seven or especially seven hours in a in a night for like two or three nights in a row right, right. yeah then i start going into like just survival mode just play guard and count you get that fucking like really bad systemic fatigue you're just like fuck i'm so tired it's tight yeah, yeah. days in a row isn't it? it's not the what yeah. the one night if you do a little bit below seven you should find it's just that it's systemically a few days in a row do you know any fellas in the special forces do you have any friends who've been in special forces well i do it's about toby richards shout out to him Handsome, strong. Uh, he was special forces, was it? No, he wasn't. Spe- that's not true. Actually, he was a uh, Royal Marines commander. Not, uh, not SBS or SAS. No, those guys are fucked. They'll, they'll, often they'll sleep deprive them for like days on end, and they make them like a daffodil, bro. No, yeah. no, no, they'll be they'll, they'll be like write write an essay or like write write like a complete mm. like like protocol of how the fuck we get out of here on like uh, like less than like four days sleep. That guy's really into it. I can't remember uh, Stas, the guy um, who I think you've seen his charity. It's called Through Dark. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he likes a lot of myself, chats him quite a bit. He started jiu-jitsu recently as well. He's on a, a SBS, so Special Boat Service, which is the most elite union you can have. And actually, one of the PTs used to work in my gym, yeah. Paul, he was um, a paratrooper. Oh, yeah, God. So ser- serious, That's serious. serious. It's yeah. really serious, yeah, and they're just tough as fuck. Just Always very friendly because they're fucking animals, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's comforting, you know, I imagine, for them knowing. You like, did, yeah, it, it is. You know what you can do, really yeah. Really yeah, yeah. You know what you can do. It's yeah. interesting, like, listening to a tim kennedy like snippet and he's talking about jiu-jitsu and he's like yeah like this is the classic thing oh i see red bar it's like yeah we can do jiu-jitsu in like this soft like padded room with our nice judo mats and our spring floor yeah but it's like if i have your mount like back mount on the fucking street and i smash your head into the concrete and you start seeing fucking like cerebral fluids and shit coming out of your nose and like so you start seeing <laughs> all this blood coming out it's like it's, it's a different, different it's, it's not fuck, the same it's a very thing different at all. story like, <laughs> all i need is one inch to fucking smash your head into the floor and we've got a different fucking <laughs> he's he, he, he's insane bro. yeah he's, he, um, he's yeah. not insane but he's he's a yeah he's always that's the thing he's not actually insane actually very his opposite was very sane that's yeah. the thing he's honest i think those guys top level guys that those marines etc have seen everything so they tend to be almost completely sane they're almost the opposite in some ways they're insane but actually they realize reality do you see what i mean a lot of people yeah. they kind of block it out but they've seen everything right as well he was would be roger didn't he in, in the ufc wasn't it? i remember back in there do you remember yeah, that yeah. fight he beat him in a crazy way as well because I, I listened to this interview and he's like yeah i just wanted him to get my back get him get it, put him in the best position his best position Time so i could get out and just fucking what he did he be, remember roger cut loads of weight remember he looked dreadful remember yeah and roger saying to me he said that when tim kennedy um got out of batman he said the fear because he literally had nothing he had nothing it wasn't a mental thing what he just literally physically had nothing he said just nothing you could do physically but he was so exhausted you've yeah. been in a calorie deficit for mm. a while are you still in a calorie deficit now um no no you know what my, my food is um always it's something like yours at the moment so long long term i tend to just eat very well make sure i'm like you i make sure i hit my protein solid meals and then kind of have whatever i like around that so i'll have carbs help at you potato rice etc and then yeah. just add if i have a crap for once it basically but, but you were in a deficit for a while yeah i was i got down to around 91 i think it was it's wow. from 105 um now i weigh 95 this morning and that's a sweet spot my weight just stays the same there when i eat well and basically have a bit of crap for once and i just kind of re- maintain that i feel much stronger again that way how is your energy 
get it whilst during that deficit getting out to 91 you know what it was, it was fine it, it was fine it? yeah it was okay because the thing is i think that you're quite uh, good with your meal timing yeah I still, yeah so basically make sure i started a good meal before i trained mm. um my sleep was good um i because i run the business i don't pt really anymore anymore i have time to recover from stuff i do which is a privilege but also i've created my life to have that yeah. so i am um, yeah so i was i was fine truly really, really fine and the deficit was small it wasn't if you make a small deficit 500, you're not, 500. yeah 300 to 500 you'll maintain that diet easily because you're not hungry and also you'll feel good and you maintain your strength if you're losing loads of strength while you're dieting you're losing muscle and fat at the same rate which means all that happen is you end up smaller version of yourself but the same body fat percentage it's just a horrible vibe it's, it's the worst case scenario yeah, exactly exactly that actually makes you feel nauseous someone losing muscle makes you anxious it does <laughs> as well i thought I, I bring out but i bring i bring straight i bring out the metabolic right okay, now. I, bring, I, bring, I, bring, I was uh, expecting to have some amino acids here sipping them i should have bought, I should, actually, I should have bought <laughs> <laughs> but that crap amino acids that's another another story as well yeah. and i saw a question that ye yeah that's gay with a question mark was yeah. that <laughs> it's, uh, it's a wish. similar question i guess uh no, for me. So the question was, are, are you ever going to get back in the gi? Uh, it wasn't necessarily a podcast question as much I as directly. But we all train here. Are you ever going to get back in the gi? No. Are you? And, and, Char and Charles gi? told me. Well, uh, you've got I've a couple gradings to do. <laughs> <laughs> you still don't eat my black belts. So you <laughs> just pretend. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, give, I wonder if Roger can give me my black belt. I'll give you a, a black headband or something. <laughs> or <laughs> <laughs> a bit I, cheesy. I think I, I've just come to like the... Look, you're a bit better, I, don't you? I, I was... So I don't... I had a client that I was training every day six, day, six days a week, and he would, he would happen to train at like a certain time. And I was like, okay, uh, we, we, we managed to change, change times or whatever. But like, I was doing three gi competition classes a week and two privates with Owen for no gi. And I was like, I've just come to the realization after like two years, and I was like, why am I doing fucking two privates with Owen in no exactly gi? Costs you as much, and yeah. I'm doing fucking three privates, and I'm doing three gi sessions a week. What a waste of time this is. What a waste of time. What a waste, waste of time. I've literally yeah. wasted like two years of my life yeah. doing those gi class. But anyway, so I well, I, I knew that straight away. I was watching you do gi classes and I was just going, they got Instagram. I was like, what a waste of time. What what a waste of time. <laughs> literally. Like, I literally just <laughs> shake, shake, shaking my, actually shaking my head. <laughs> it's how, good. Yeah, it's how am I going to get an erection from this photo? Yeah. <laughs> 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 that old chestnut. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to ask you this because this is this is such like a classic Brazilian mentality, like <laughs> of the foundations of jiu-jitsu. Like you no, can't you can't get better at jiu-jitsu unless you do the gi because you know you learn the fundamental. Look at his face. His right? voice, his voice as well. You learn the Disgusting. fundamental. This is this a classic conversation. Disgusting. You know the foundation is in in the gi. You need to learn proper jiu-jitsu. What I would say is what that the gi that? slows it down. Like when you start, yeah, true, exactly. you can grab someone and hold them in front of you. <laughs> like that and you can you know you can vibe you can vibrate with your grips like <laughs> and like hold them there until you get your move like especially you know you save up loads of energy you plan that i'm going to do this move but in no gi <laughs> like the grips are dynamic <laughs> in no gi you, you know what i'm saying you can't just you can't just hold a collar and move it in every direction <laughs> so in no gi. like you have to actually once you get a grip it only works in a certain direction or if your legs are placed in a certain way so in a way no gi is more difficult when you start out especially because you're not you don't you haven't gotten to grips with the grips yet so you have you to think too quickly almost in no gi when you yeah. first start yeah. yeah the grips are way more like they come and go much quicker you know short ex expiry date as uh andrew would say it's like a, a short oh god short we talk about food he loves he loves, he loves food. food food analogy you I cook you cook, you cook them here yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, like a really good chef you just keep throwing in a chin strap everyone thinks what's that secret mate you need to come you need to come <laughs> down <laughs> and just talking about a co co cookie book or something it's so yeah. good though so, so sauteing good. food everything I relate. Yeah. I like, I relate, yeah. Yeah. so you, like what are you so so People basically, there's like more time. It's slower, right? So, right. so literally, it's just the pro the recognition. So when you're a, when you're a noob, right? It's recognizing the moves as <laughs> yeah, they come. Perfect. Like, and if you don't recognize them, they're gone by the time you know. By the the, the opportunity is already gone, basically. So in the gi, yeah. well, if you can get your grips, you can then buy yourself step loads step of time. Step, right? Yeah, to actually start doing the moves, and then you recognize the moves quicker, and then you're able to hit them hit them quicker. Like most of the reaction timing is recognizing. The, the correct move at the time sure but yeah. can you build a really good foundation foundation of jiu-jitsu in the in no gi uh yeah 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 you can do it in no gi but i would say it's gonna be a bit harder for you to practice it on people than true in the yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a good yeah. point but then at some point fast. you're gonna have to make the transition from gi where you have the grips course, to no yeah. gi and maybe your body will be more like 
used to it and you'll just have makes you physically stronger movement. being a gi doesn't it the definitely i mean physical yeah. training of a gi definitely makes you physically your hands yeah. and for sure yeah. for sure but it's diff- but, but, again it's different gripping some of it's not, like the gi is all gripping with the fingertips like that and no gi is more like i don't know it's fingertips I, I, again I, I, but it's i feel like i get way better pu- actually no, i get a better pump in the in the gi than no gi but like, yeah definitely yeah, pump. yeah, yeah definitely yeah, yeah. Pump. but it um, depends what you're doing again if you're if you're fighting you're doing, for yeah. the back in no in no gi if you're on someone's back Fuck and you're holding me. a seat belt for five minutes know. you're gonna be you're gonna be fucked your, your grips will be tired yeah. by the end of it I had this conversation with one of my clients yesterday. He's like, he's giving me that uh, the, the foundation talk and the gear. And the, he, he wasn't he wasn't like supporting. He was just playing devil's advocate. I was like, look at fucking wrestlers. Like you're telling yeah. me, you want to put like a wrestler should have learned wrestling in the fucking gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For no. foundation, like you, you're telling me a wrestler True. who's never done jujitsu before can't just go into a fucking gi class having never done the gi and have right. an absolute understanding of how to fucking pin the yeah. shit out of people yeah, and destroy yeah, people yeah, it's true. go fuck yourself man well I think I think yeah. it's, the simple thing was so I think that because I've been around for long enough so what happened was back in the day <laughs> was around the block and also in jiu-jitsu there's um so no big sick but we saw on a side jiu-jitsu was it 18 years ago so i remember i wanted to do original mma and no gi but you had to do it in the gi right you had to start the gi the foundation was the gi if you do gi first you'll be better at no gi right yeah yeah so we always thought that the pro- the reason that we thought that was because the talent pool was bigger in gi because all the top guys in the world who are fighting adcc were training in a gi Got that's it. the real reason Got so it. what will go you have a really talented gi guy and they'll do a bit of no gi but like oh look the guys who are in ADCC are all gi guys they have to be good in the gi first that was the reason it came about oh. then we had talented guys just doing no gi um, changed and he also had good teaching without the gi as well John Danner teaching better but also you would agree the teaching in without the gi is better because you have be very blunt a lot of the American coaches teaching a regimented <laughs> program <laughs> rather than going here's a technique of the day and then just walking off yeah uh, th- that that's the difference I think reason why Nogi has developed so much more as well systems. because the teaching the systems exactly systems. systematic approaches correct mm. also Owen said this before on our podcast as well it's like it's, it's harder to teach white belts like that you should have the more advanced instructors teaching white belts than like yeah that's actually belts. a good point yeah with the high level guys yeah. almost, it's quite simple isn't it go to do yeah, this just send them to do their work if they're high level guys if it's if it's noobs there's no get this mic in your face man You're there's no uh, them. is this not close enough no I feel like really it, it, yeah honestly even if it's this far the week mate this we're not close. going through this again this <laughs> is uh, you're getting close. removed from the podcast this is touching <laughs> 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 just <laughs> the Charles experience <laughs> <laughs> no, that the Charles one I'm not even me it's just Charles it's Charles sitting in the dark room naked of course naked top on pants off this podcast just yeah exactly dim light dim light that's a good point though so all the all the talented guys are doing gear yeah exactly and then once once that once that we had bigger talent pool and no gear then the guys obviously Gordon etc then started w- winning winning tournaments and people started to realise because until um, Gordon you had a lot of guys who were still gear guys at like Penner it was ADC at uh, Graval Browler they still were predominantly gear guys right um, and then Gordon Ryan kind of made people think differently people were like oh shit you don't need to be training in a gear at all no gear is way more fun as well yeah because you know why it's more fun because the op- opposite reason what Owen said where you can't have someone stall you and grab you and just vibrates literally like this yeah. because yeah you're like an older guy just grab your wrist yeah. and hold you and you're like well the fuck's one of this also touch wood all my injuries unless you're, unless you're james cooper strong you can just body lock someone they just guys gonna suck the hips in yeah, <laughs> lie, lie on yeah you can body lock in gear as well yeah. yeah but i do remember actually my favorite one was vi- um, owen's video and be training max and i had him <laughs> yeah, yeah it's my favorite yeah, 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 yeah it's funny isn't it it's yeah, perfect. Like yeah it's yeah, amazing it's amazing <laughs> It's perfect. <laughs> you like this. So basically, I was training Max. Enthralling. And I, yeah, I was rolling, and I basically had him in a body lock position. And I generally, he videoed it, and then we actually watched the back, and because we were in the same position for so long, no one moved at all. It generally looked like a still photo. Was that the one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, but genuinely. Max had no, two don't. hands on your face. And for the you whole two hands. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. It, to be fair, the story was three 15-second stories. Uh, so it was 45 seconds that's even better, segment that's even better. no <laughs> movement people though. moving in the background it's like it's yeah like, it's so you look generally if you didn't have the people moving in the yeah. background you would think it wasn't moving at yeah, all for, for reference there's so a clock in the background there is a, there's a story to take from this that I'm lazy was one of them but being serious <laughs> so like one of the biggest ones actually you can slow someone down without the key so you, ju- you can yeah. you can actually get good grips not necessarily got grips like owing to like grabbing their wrist etc mm. that is dynamic but in terms of positionally like chest to chest body lock passing someone even even from guard you can, you guys are good you can slow someone down so when you watch um guys are very very good obviously nogi's always going to be more dynamic right but you get guys are good they actually do slow the guy down 
So you know, you get the guy, guys, that's just mainly Brazilians in the gi, they jump around in circles. Yeah. Guys that are good can slow the guy down, slow the movement, or at least track the movement yeah. when they're jumping around, right? It's the foot tracking in no gi. Yeah. I feel like if you're playing guard, right, it's hard if it's in no gi to slow someone down because you can't grip them and anchor yourself to them as you move. You follow them though. with your hands. Yeah, because it's too risky, right? You can't hold your hands out and then. Mm they start circling around, your hands are still wide and you're out of position, but you can do it with your legs really effectively. I just think it's not it's not taught well to like track someone properly with your with like the soles of your feet and, and the shoelaces. Well, Gordon, well, Gordon was the first one to really teach it and made it more simple, right? I mean, Owen, when he first taught me how to do it, it changed everything, literally, where you actually can follow the movement. They might jump around, but you actually follow them around. So yeah. they, can't, they can't, you actually just yeah. stuck to them, basically, as they move. Best guy at that is Eddie Cummings. If you watch, Ed, I don't know if you've seen that match, Eddie Cummings versus... Renato Canuto. Oh yeah, Renato yeah. Canuto. Yeah. That was yeah, that was an old match, right? But Eddie Cummins basically Renato's the most jumpy guy ever. Ridiculous, but he, yeah. he didn't do shit the whole times because Eddie was just pointing his feet at his feet. So every time he moved he would like stumble a little bit and then he'd have to reset. Yeah. Which is like really good. Yeah, really good study there if you wanna Yeah, Canuto fought time. Charles Charles um Charles Monte a few times and he beat Charles really? I think in the fight yeah. maybe semi finals of um, Nogi uh, Black Belt. I remember him literally watching it even as a a long time ago, I remember top of my head watching him. He was so jumpy. I remember literally going like this. He was playing guard. His legs were just doing this all over the place. I was yeah. like, oh, the headache as well. Too much, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, also pacing and timing. Just yeah, fucking yeah. Pa- like wearing people down. I think that's a big key yeah. we've been speaking about recently. Yeah, just tiring like, people out. Just tiring people. Like, even though it, it's also being disciplined with stuff. Like, even if the guard passes there, not taking it and just sticking in a position where you can like... Not wasting like, energy, go basically. To, go to pass, come back down. Go to pass, come back down. Go to pass, come back down, then pass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just slow, then just then they're crushing they're the, slowing the yeah, right just now. make sure when you get to good positions, they're actually fucked and they're not just going to explode out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cause so Gordon does, doesn't he, really well? By the time he passes, they're fucked, basically. Yeah, yeah but, uh, our boy did uh, did that video. Uh, less less impressed, more involved. You love that guy. Shout out that guy. He Shout loves me. He loves you more. Yeah, we love him too. Anyway, yeah. He, he, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what just happened? No, he did this sick video talking <laughs> about Gordon shirt. Ryan, like how he did, how he tires people out. That's the, the, the point. The point he just said, like. If, even if the gap, even if the pass is there, just fucking exhaust them. Like yeah. sitting. At no, the I get that point. That's I agree with that stuff. I'm yeah. so complete. I meant more the fact that he loves me, I love him, and that, that was a oh. bit I was confused by. It's yeah. this guy who keeps putting up uh, YouTube, YouTube instructionals. They're good instructionals. They're really fucking good, but. He just keeps referencing me, and I, and I have oh. no place in these videos. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit jealous. Little bit Sometimes jealous. I don't he, know. Yeah. Sometimes, like I, I appreciate it. He, he shouted. Like, there's one video he shouted you out at the start. Yeah. And I was like. The rest of the video, you're just not involved. In yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so in- that's so weird. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he listens to the podcast as well, yeah. by the way. Shout out, to, shout out to him. Yeah, shout out to him. his coach, Mike or whatever it is. Jake, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake. Very good. That's a good name. You want to? You wanted it. So I got asked before the podcast about they're going to talk about drugs yeah, in sports. So what? What? What kind of questions? You know what? You know did what you want I, to ask? Actually, you know what I'd love to know is um, this is for myself. Yeah. Um. If you say if you're stacking whatever, if you're on a cycle, how much does that have effect on muscle protein synthesis? And can you actually reduce? Do you, can you reduce your protein intake if you are on steroids because you, this the because you have more testosterone, and you have more. Yeah, good good point. Um, yes, the answer is yes, you can. But to maximize the effect of steroids, you need to be taking more protein. Does more, that make sense? Yeah. Oh wow, more protein, more protein than you yeah to, ma- to maximize. So obviously, your protein synthesis goes up when you're taking testosterone. Yeah. But to maximize that, you'll be taking more protein because you literally, because of, because, because, the, because to u- utilize it properly. Oh. But, but, your body, to, but, but yeah. you don't need, you don't need to take as much protein because you're in high levels of protein synthesis. Yeah, anyway. you, get, you get away with eating shit, to be honest with you, if you're taking a lot of drugs. Got it, got um, it. If that makes sense. I guess, yeah, because, because you're already in such an anabolic, like, window yeah. permanently. Permanently, exactly. Your body does a better job of utilizing that protein. Correct. So technically you don't need as much, but then still to optimize, you would still need a lot of protein. Yeah, Does that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so literally, so still that's why bodybuilders, hollow body still having a lot of protein, yeah. but they could get away with not having as much protein. But then again, if you're a top end bodybuilder or athlete, you still should be having um, large amounts of protein. See awesome. With, see with a uh, growth hormone, right? I, my scouser friend uh, was telling me he used <laughs> it always starts well when it starts a scout. <laughs> my scouser friend, <laughs> he used to take growth hormone, and he said it was five times quicker recovery whilst you're sleeping. And he said he used to take these power naps, and he'd wake up like fucking charged after sleeping for like five minutes, almost by accident. Right? Would you say you can get away with sleeping a lot less when you're on growth hormone? Um, so. Yeah, it has recovery, yes. Yeah. But in terms of how you feel, no. I mean, that, that, okay, a, a yeah. lot of people anecdotally have said literally you're going to get better quality sleep and be all fine. It gets the same thing as a steroid thing, actually. So 
yeah, you probably get away with less sleep, but then again, optimally, you still should have eight hours. Does that make sense? Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So it's, you probably will get away with it because you're, again, recovering quicker from the growth hormone or steroids. But it's like, if we're taking growth hormone or steroids, right, you're going to recover quicker. Yeah. But still, optimally, she need to get the best recovery, she'd be in both. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like an example of literally looking at the, to- uh, the top level guys in the whole world. People go, is it, ta- is it talent versus hard work? I'm like, it's both. It's both, bro. So is that, is that the same thing with that? It's basically like, if you want to be top level of that, you're, based, you're doing both. I'm not going like, oh, well, because I'm doing that, I'll, um, I'll um, look, you're going to risk your health doing it. Why are you going to risk your health? So you can be lazier. I think it's crazy, right? Do you know what I mean? Literally, yeah, it's crazy yeah, when people yeah. do that. Go, yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take steroids so I can drink. I'm like, That's actually what are you such doing? a good point. Because more you, effort, you, isn't you, it? You're correct, yeah. More effort, but you're putting yourself at way Risk more, for no reason, Way literally. more risk. Yeah. This, so... I was watching um, some Michael Zatel and he's talking about, and I've kind of like adapted this view as well, though I have, mm. I've never done steroids, but like if you're thinking about doing steroids and you haven't done, you've done like less than five years of natty training and you've kind of like maximized your absolute, absolute potential there, what's your thoughts around that? Good question, because that's the most smart common question <clears throat> to get, not should I do steroids on 14? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why 14 year old boys mess with me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so actually, it's a really good answer for you. So one of um, the best uh, natural coach in the world, um, off the top of my head, what his name Eugene is. Eugene No, he's not. No, no, he's, uh, 3DMJ, they're called. The, the ah, uh, Eric Helms. Yes, Eric Helms. So one of the guys who works in the top level uh, natural bodybuilder, he was going to do a steroid cycle and he had his testosterone, whatever it was, and in fate with him. And he said, you know what? Once I do the steroid cycle, when I start, I want to make sure my diet is absolutely perfect. I want to make sure my sleep is perfect. I want to make sure this is perfect. A recovery, whatever it was. And he sat there and goes, why don't I just do that first? If I have more room to improve those things, why am I taking steroids? Why don't I do those things first? Then once I've done those, then move on to taking steroids. The truth is 99% of people out there, way higher than that actually, Charles, way, way higher. Um, they should be optimizing all those things first. And I've seen guys in gyms I genuinely thought were, weren't drug free, who were drug free because they just trained very well, had a good genetics. Wow. Um, to be at the top level, uh, say bodybuilder, we're talking IFB, pro bodybuilder, etc. Most people don't want that anyway. Yeah. But you're gonna have to take drugs. Of yeah. course you are. No yeah. matter how, of course you are. Literally, you, you are mentally ill if you think you're gonna compete at a high level in bodybuilding, not take drugs. Compete at a high level of dr- non-drug tested powerlifting. You're gonna need to take drugs. And I would argue, not argue, I'd say factually, so I've spoken to a lot of endocrinologists, I'm not gonna say who they are, but top professors, top universities in person. Um, the top level guys in MMA in particular have taken steroids because, not because they're lazy, not because they're cheating, because you cannot do the volume of training. It's the recovery, so you cannot do three training sessions a day. So say you're doing MMA, right, you're gonna need to train your wrestling, your Thai boxing, your jiu-jitsu, strength and conditioning as well. So three to four sessions a day. You will not be able to recover from those sessions if you're just eating and sleeping well. It's not possible. So it's more to do with that. And people go, that person's cheating. An example would be uh, Lance Armstrong. So you remember when he came out, was doing drugs. Every single um, Tour de France athlete is taking drugs. You would not be able to do the Tour de France without taking drugs because you would lose so much muscle while doing that kind of, that kind of distance, you would actually end up dying. I was told this by an endocrinologist. Wow. The reason being is because the amount of muscle you would burn would cause rhabdomyolysis. Oh, yeah. So from the, the toxins you create from breaking down muscle tissue would um, cause cause your kidneys to fail. That's how that's how much. So it's not wow. physically possible to, to, the, to do the Tour de France. But upsets people. They go, oh, well, you know, these guys are drug cheats. No matter what you did, Charles, the top people in the whole world, with, the, with or without drugs, will still be the top people in the world. They'll just be doing slower times. Yeah, Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Olympia, would still be Mr. Olympia. They'll just be smaller. They'll yeah. still have the top 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They'll just be smaller. But the order of things will still be the same. It's just they wouldn't be as big. That's all it is. Same with the, the cycling or the sprinting. Oh, well, that guy's a cheat taking steroids. They're all taking steroids. So the guys at the top are so the top because the most talented and the most hardworking. Yeah, it's yeah. just the way it is. Interesting point. Like, <clears throat> and you said, you said this before, like, for someone who's thinking about getting on the gear, it's like just optimize everything first. Correct, yeah. What kind of time frame would you recommend that they would optimize things for? That's a good question because that's the next question we're asked, right? So I've been training for then, then they listen to James and go, well, I've been training another two years. What, you know, the, then, then, then the next question is actually, I know I'm giving really sensible, but it's what, what I would do if I was young again, right? Or go like, you look at this and go, you're opening up a can of worms when you, when you take steroids because first of all, you do one cycle, you're not gonna do one cycle, it's just a lie. You're not gonna do one and then never take it again. I do know some people have done that and that's great. You've got, say you, you um, do a steroid cycle, you gain th- three or four kilos of muscle, right? And then you stop doing them, you probably lose, you come up properly, you lose about a kilo. You've added three kilos of muscle you never would have. 
Yeah. Great. And that's fantastic. If you can genuinely on those people and do that, great. That's huge, um, by the way. That's huge. It's, it's insane, literally, your, your, your lifts. Um, for your lifts as well. Especially for a cycle. What's yeah, for a cycle, yeah. For, say, 12 to 14 weeks, whatever huge. it is. Um, the, tr- the truth is, sorry, to, to answer that question, how long should I do it before I think about it again, is... What is the reason you're doing it? So if your reason is because you want to compete at top level of body uh, bodybuilding, then yeah, then then I reckon another two to three years not putting sorry two years of not putting muscle on, then yeah, maybe think about it. Mm. But if you're uh, someone who is in a sport or just wants to look good, then just probably just don't do it. I really really mean that. Don't do it because the the benefits, the the negatives outweigh the rewards. They do long term. So I get asked a lot of people ask me about a lot of older guys will ask me, oh, how, should I do TRT? testosterone replacement therapy right and the same thing get your blood work done first because i've had older people they think the testosterone is low they get tested and their testosterone is high and normal above i've seen literally people above range who are older and say why would you open up a can of worms you have to inject stuff the rest of your life when you're already producing loads of testosterone it's not even that it's not even a replacement then well then it's well that's a good that's a really smart answer we just said then it's not replacement technically if you're doing actual testosterone replacement you're actually going to be lower (laughs) <laughs> taking the drug yeah, right, yeah. as well so the answer is yes let's make it simpler i'll wait another year then re- reassess it but then think about why you're doing it if though the answer is going to be because i'm going to give people the answer they want is what should you do right so i'm going to go through that if you every single endocrinologist will tell you do not take oral steroids the reason being is if you take dynamol or anavar and you're, you're taking that it has to go through something called first pass metabolism it has to go through your liver when it goes through your liver, that's what causes liver damage, that, and that's what increases cholesterol, um, bad cholesterol LDL, yeah. and reduces HDL. We, there's no reason to take that. People are saying, I'm scared to inject something. Well, then just don't fucking take steroids. I'm being blunt with you, don't do it. Because the damage you'll do to your body by taking oral steroids, there's no reason to do them. Wow. Then if I was gonna do something, I'll take testosterone, and start at something like 300 milligrams a week, which is probably double what your own body produces. You will gain so much from that, it's unbelievable. If you took, say 700 milligrams your first uh first uh, cycle would you gain more muscle no you'll just get more side effects so you want to always start low always with something like that as well but if you're going to do it generally get someone who knows what they're doing and talk be, uh, probably the best thing to do is go and talk to an endocrinologist if you've got private health care chat to them that i'm going to do this and tell them they won't be able to advise you but at least have a chat with them don't just go well i'm, I'm just gonna do it willy-nilly because you are taking a drug still at the end of the day and same with anything some people get no side effects the whole life but some people who have bad genetics can get really ill from it really quickly you can really fuck them up really fuck them up skin health skin wise. health literally as well and again right yeah there are positives that fucking hell if you look good and you're fucking strong and jacked everyone wants to be strong and jacked right but, but um, what's underneath the hood yeah exactly so if you're going to do it make sure you get that's the biggest advice you can do don't take your rules and also get your blood work done regularly beginning of your cycle and at the end after you've come off properly as well I think people fall into the trap as well. They do. They'll try and do a bunch of things. They'll try and do, in, in oh, the think everything cycle. at once, right? As and well, then, yeah. And they don't know what like yeah, what works. Say, say, <laughs> say, say, if you, say if you stack three things together, like I, I don't know, like let's say Tess Decker and fucking Anavar. Yeah, yeah, if that makes huh? sense. But yeah, it does. Yeah. Let's, let's say you've done that, yeah. and then you go for the first six, like six to eight weeks. Fucking hell, I feel awful. My back is fucking. How fucked. do you know like, which one did that? Yeah. How do you know which one? Yeah, but that's the thing. So it's the same one. same with anything right in life right so if you're if you're doing any kind of like um you you do right example diet right people go oh i think dairy is making me ill how do you know you eat shit all day you eat everything how the fuck are you gonna know the first thing is start simple remove one thing at a time then you'll know That's and the way back, reverse engineer it with with drugs do one thing and just keep it simple and and uh, again as i said before the biggest thing to take away is get your blood work done and also think should you be doing it in the first place because Owen Scal's friend telling me to do it. <laughs> telling Owen to do it. Probably probably really isn't a reason to do it. And he's really clever. He's been to Feltham. Think about how many like uh, how many kids or like let's say kids or people who uh, train in a jiu-jitsu studio in bumfuck Jesus. nowhere. Not even bumfuck nowhere. And the, the professor, professors like jumped We're on. We're thinking of up north, aren't we, mainly? <laughs> Could be yeah. anyone. Yeah. And their professors yeah. jumped on, professor has jumped on like a, a cycle of whatever. He's like, no, no, you need to, Brazilian actually doesn't have to be. Brazilian, Brazilian isn't he, could be, of course. He could, be a, he, could be, he could be anyone. He could be northern. He could be northern. Northern but as well. But he's like, you know, he's telling his students to jump on the gear because that's what he did without doing any blood work and he has no fucking idea what the consequences yeah. are going to be. 
Exactly. Then they're all fat and crying when they get to 50. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if, they, if they make it to 50. They make it to 50, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. I, I was one of those people, actually. I remember, um, I'm sure maybe Charles was as well. Charles never taken anything, but we said, oh, where, where are the bodies? Well, a lot of fucking bodybuilders are dying now. Admittedly, the amount they do is very different, right? Of course it is. But let's not pretend you're not doing harm to your health. And then the big devil's advocate to that as well, again, is right people don't do everything for health reasons so literally if you want to do it do it like you can't go to yourself everything has to be healthy you do right people who criticize the most usually smoke and drink loads or do coke on the weekend yeah exactly. and then you're getting no benefits from that so so i can't yeah so but what one an endocrinologist spoke to actually he was um again a professor of the biggest university in don't the uk i won't say well of course i won't say his name no i won't um he said to me he goes i know you want me to tell you it's really bad for you, but compared to smoking and drinking, it's nothing. That's the exact words that came out of oh, my wow. mouth. So um, if, you just, if you do it correctly, that's the thing as well. I think a good point you bring up, and you've made me think about this the last couple, I'd say almost years as well, but I'm going to start taking some action on it now. It's just like, if you, if you feel- You're going to start a cycle? Great. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounded like. If you, if you feel really good, and you're, you're like, I think it's even more important if you feel really, if you feel really good and you're like, yeah, I'm lifting weights, I'm getting great gains, I have like good, good libido, all that kind of stuff. You should get your blood work done, 100, percent especially if you feel good. Yeah, that's exactly. That's especially a good point. If you feel good. Why? Feel because that's your reference point. Because then, it, smart. Because then yeah. if you feel bad later on, or if you're thinking about getting on TRT later or HRT, that's a good point. Then, actually. You, then you look back. What was it like when it was good? And how does it? Wh- like, what's what? What are the two fucking data points? In the correlation, like, can I? That's get, really smart. Do you know That's what I mean? Smart. As you get older, you're like, I, I, I don't feel as good. Okay, what did the blood work say when I was 30 and I felt really good? Let, let get get me back that to there, doc. And then he'll be like, okay, cool, we can do that. Interesting thing about feeling good, right? So we know we've all been there, right? So if, say if I people, don't, I don't feel good. I feel like shit. I feel like shit. <laughs> exhausted, <laughs> depressed Doctors all the time. Yeah, exactly. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I like actually. So season, anyway. If you watch the video of this, we all look shattered, look in each other's eyes, and look dead. Um, <laughs> yeah, literally, we're supposed to train off this, and all of us are like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. But be, yeah, what, what it was the reference point feeling good. So an example would be, you know, when someone goes to, you, what is feeling good? Because you know, people go, you go about their diets, etc. Most people feel like absolute garbage. We, we're tired from training. You feel like tired, neurally tired. They don't know what it feels like to even feel good. Right? Yeah. An example would be, right, so say, um, right, say you thought you had shit sleep last night. I do this all the time. And and then you look at your um, app on your phone, it says you've had nine hours. Then you feel good. Then you're, oh, actually had good sleep last night. You feel yeah, like to feel good. So much of that literally is what, 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 what you're... Um, you're told to think as well but see it is isn't it sleep literally if you know you've had shit sleep or think you had shit sleep you feel worse or how many times you've come into the academy right and you feel good and someone goes bro you look fucking knackered and you're like oh fuck maybe i am tired maybe i do feel like shit and you start to feel tired again (laughs) so i'm sure you've had this before clients i've had clients who are texting me like nine in the morning being like charles like it's it's saturday morning charles i can't see i'm so fucking hungover i'd be like get your fucking ass into the gym honestly he's this guy's like come in at like 12 o'clock he's pb all-time pb yeah all-time pb this bench and he's had like three hours sleep and like 15 drinks the night before. I don't, I don't have an experience. Bro, one of the biggest things, an example would be actually, so you've had this with training. So I forgot to say this earlier. So you know when you go in and quite often you're like, you've had all the meals, you feel great and you have a shit workout. Yeah. Or sometimes you literally go in and you feel exhausted, don't want to train, you feel like shit. Once you warm up, you feel amazing. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes you warm up and you, and sometimes you have this as well. You feel tired. Once I warm up, warm up and feel good yeah. and you still feel like shit. You're like, okay, st- after warmed up, you go like, now there's a reference point I need to not train as heavy. Because yeah. sometimes, you know what I mean? You go and you go, I yeah. actually still feel like garbage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. then you go, just need to take it easy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So where would look, one look to get like the, the, what kind of stuff would they ask their endocrinologist or a doctor to for for blood work? Yeah, so uh, usually the normal full blood panel, um, would they would, they would they would do it. So it's going to be, a list maybe we'll put it up but it'll be um liver yeah, enzymes yeah. yeah we'll put it up but it's going to be the main things to look at would be um red blood cell count obviously your testosterone um hdl ldl um liver enzymes as alt which is liver enzymes um what else would be on there c-reactive proteins tells your level of inflammation in your body uh, that's the top of my head so ma- main things will get skewed from taking testosterone obviously your testosterone levels luteinizing hormone because you're not producing any testosterone yourself so when you take a do- um exogenous testosterone your own production will switch off because your body thinks well i don't need to produce any so when you take testosterone your luteinizing hormone will switch off but the main things to look at be your cholesterol liver enzymes um blood pressure so not blood work blood pressure because cholesterol takes a long time to kill you but high blood pressure can kill you instantly wow. so um i know people literally clients who've had 
uh, who've taken their blood pressure. There's nothing to do with steroids generally, but they've had blood pressure literally of like 190 over systolic and diastolic, say, 140. And they have no idea. Listening, that's really bad. Yeah, it's hideous. I mean, you're literally, you need to call the hospital right now. Yeah. And then by just training properly and eating properly, they're back to 120 <laughs> over 80. Just with that <laughs> warning, you might finish them off. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but oh, luck, but luckily, they pay for the block by then, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. so just carry on the way that's you are. That's how I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on the way you are. That's right, as you cross the road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so um, those I think definitely yeah, that, those things I look for though yeah. Okay, cool. And f- for someone who is cycling, how often would they? Do you think they would need to get a blood test done? Uh, so like I said before, say you do a twelve week cycle, which is average twelve to fifteen weeks, you'll do um, you'll do it probably once every um, six months. And that's fine. very important to do. You have to, you have to, because Why? no matter how you feel, again, like we said before, um, you might be really ill. Or you might feel terrible and actually really healthy, so you just don't know. And that could be a byproduct of the the steroids causing cholesterol. And yeah, of course, because ninety nine percent of people it will it will reduce. Look, taking testosterone, the amount that will make a difference. To, look, if you're doing TR, actual TRT, it won't. But if you're taking exogenous testosterone or steroids, it's going to skew your cholesterol. Um, but I would also say as well, it's a long story as well, is to make sure you're doing so. If that's your vice, give us a story. Yeah, yeah, give it, that's your vice. Um, make sure you're looking after yourself outside of that. So if you're look the I don't see anything wrong with it at all. If you're doing steroids, that's fine. But what I do see wrong with it is, that's your vice, everything else needs to be perfect. Don't be one of those people that goes, well, um, I'm gonna smoke, drink, and do steroids. Right. Because it will kill you. Yeah. Um, if that's your vice, do that, but do nothing else. Same with literally, it's, you'll burn the candle at both ends and it's gonna hit you. And I know I'm the guy talking right now, like the, how I was spoken to when I was young, but it could be you. And it will be you. Some people smoke, right? They always go, well, it's not going to be me. I'm like, well, you are going to die from smoking. Because it's crazy how many people will go, the current smoking, right? So 20% of the population smoke. Yeah, but, yeah. And it will kill you. It, it will, will, it'll get you eventually. Yeah, it will shorten your life. And the way I look at it again, sorry to repeat the same point, guys, but what benefit are you getting from that? At least with steroids, at least Zero. you're benefiting something from it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Swole, yeah. Yeah, you're looking swole, Jack. It depends how you smoke, though. Why don't you smoke crack? Oh. Then you can do backflips and stuff. Yeah, well, they think they, they, think they can. They <laughs> think they, sure they, they can. can. Yeah, there's <laughs> enough money on it. bit of crystal as well. <laughs> on the end of the backflip. I've actually got a story. A story um, if, if I need to get in before we, before we close off, actually. A good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, one of my, you'll love the fact I'm referencing, this is crazy. So I don't know if you know, guys, you're not really in the bodybuilding scene. So I knew bodybuilders are crazy because... You well, have to be crazy yeah. So, one of my friends was saying, one of my, one of my gay mates, um, I won't mention his name. He really wouldn't mind me mentioning him, but anyway, so he was telling me about a high level bodybuilder, IFE Pro, the most unbelievable phys- physique I've ever seen, literally ridiculous. Um, so, he, anyway, he was talking about him, and I said, and he goes, Oh, you know, um, what are you going to tell me about him? And he goes, Is he gay? And he's like, Well, more than that. I'm like, oh, Okay. So, he, anyway, what he told me about this guy was, um, and this is common, by the way. So, the reason I'm using one bodybuilder is really common. Um, first of all, loads of them, because they don't drink, obviously, because um, they're competing bodybuilding, loads of them will do a lot of recreational drugs. And I knew that doing coke, painkillers, et cetera, right? I, see, so I, this, I think I see where you're going. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is, yeah, it's really bad. So, what, what happened was, he goes to me, oh, do you know that he literally um, uh, g- goes to sex parties and gets fucked by loads of dudes? Yeah. And I said, oh, crazy, right? And then he goes, and I said, oh, but that's crazy. But then he's, yeah, but also he does loads of crystal meth as well, and because he goes- And the G as well. And the G- so you know you have gay clients, but yeah, so loads of G as well, which is very, very dangerous. That can kill you literally instantly. Even worse than alcohol. Even so, way worse. what's the yeah. G, poppers? No, G is like, um, it's like well, a, I think it's a paint thinner. Yeah, it's, it's actually, paint. I'm not sure the ins and outs of it as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I, I think it's some kind of paint thinner, but like if, if, if you do it's G- very small, you, you can it's, kill yourself. If they, you do like a few drops of it. If you do G and you drink any alcohol, any. Like, you, like it's it's almost like instant, instant death. death. Yeah, instant yeah. death. Wow. That's yeah, why it's crazy. gay clubs, gay, gay clubs make no money on alcohol. Zero. Wow. They don't sell alcohol. So I've heard. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I know from experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they all do. Anyway. They so. do those drugs. Yeah, so. But what's the specific benefit to a gay man over a normal man? To G. Yeah. Well, G, uh, well, G, 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 G gets you really high and it'll make you really horny as well. So okay, it means they can just fu- you can have sex for like okay, fine, fine. hours. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, Some of these gay parties, they'll go for days. Yeah, day, days. No, Honestly, days, days. 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 <laughs> they're nuts. They're nuts. And uh, yeah, the, my gay mates, some of these stories is crazy. But yeah, this anyway, this guy, the bodyboarder, and the reason why I mentioned it is because it said loads of them do it as well. Does Crystal and basically showed me his um, grinder profile, which I've already seen already. But the thing was, anyway, yeah, basically, <laughs> I mean, you can see it was him as well from his massive glutes bodybuilding glutes are so thick and juicy as well <laughs> and, he can see his, and he can see his earrings his, his glutes are pretty impressive and he's in a red lacy thong 
And then we know he's engaged. We're like, does his fiance know? And he's like, yeah, of course they all know. They just put up with this shit. But the point, and another bodyboarder I mentioned, a guy, Eddie Abu, that I knew he went to these sex parties uh, called um, Torture Gardens. And then I said about him, yeah, you've heard of this one as well. And he go, and I said, oh, this guy, Eddie Abu, big black dude. And I said, uh, um, and he goes, I think I'm thinking of the same guy. And he goes, and he goes, yeah, he's gay. I'm like, I don't think he is gay. And he goes, show me a picture. He goes, yep, he's gay. And he told me the story. Basically, he used to get walked around on a, on a leash, basically, and by guys as well. Wow. But these bodybuilders, I think it's extreme personality again. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm going with the story. It's just loads I'm, of gay tales. I, it's just gay tales. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Enjoy it. But the thing is, yeah, with, the, with these guys, it's extreme personality types. And if you're going to go through that, then maybe don't do steroids. Body. <laughs> <laughs> Bodybuilding is, uh, is it's, it's a fuck, it's a, it's fucked a crazy sports. fucking sport. sport. It's basically how hard can you fucking diet? <laughs> yeah, it's like how me. hard can you diet for how fucking long? Well, there's like, a, if you're, <laughs> you're at like one percent. I heard Ronnie Coleman saying he was at like one percent body fat. Yeah, that's not. If you look at it, so like to have body fat, people when you're a DEXA scanner, right, which yeah. is the most accurate way to scan someone, the lowest body fat you can be on a DEXA scanner they've ever recorded is I think like six. So what? We, but that usually is seven percent difference to what people think they are. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, so no, not six. So it must be say eight. So someone who thinks they're three percent will be ten percent on a Dexter, basically, yeah. because an a Dexter will count uh, fat in your brain and other, other tissues as well. Okay. But these bodybuilders that like you said before, they are they are nuts. And they're, 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 they're literally one percent body. Yeah, it's in, when they go on stage, like it's crazy. And the thing about the um, the drug thing as well is a, a drug called Trembolone. That um, do you know more plates, more dates? Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah which is great. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. There's a podcast, right? And he talks. <laughs> love this drug called trembolone which is a really strong steroid it's actually made for cattle so it's to improve something called feed Jeez. feed efficiency so what that does is basically so that, yeah, <laughs> yeah feed efficiency no you'll love it i you would enjoy that <laughs> feed of it. oh this is sorry to jump this is my protein question but look, go, 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 yes go, go. yeah that's what well, it's, it's actually go. perfect isn't it so what they'll do is i'll be able to give them less yes, food really. and the boom more muscle so basically what they can do it, the cost of uh, amount of food they need to give them feed but they'll still build twice as much muscle and the muscle is what we eat so yeah. where do they sell these cows yeah <laughs> 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 my favorite like, yes, American yes, one, of, one, of, one of my best friends actually yeah. i won't mention his name because he's like a really successful investment banker now but he was doing cycling he goes he's trying to get some and he goes online and they said my they're getting they're getting the raw pellets what you, you actually make this, Trembolone from, and he go, and he goes, and some guy goes, my cow is growing really well. It's really, really <laughs> vascular. His biceps look great. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you're saying sorry. Uh, uh, you're saying about Charles? No, no, that's that. that like, I, I think that's where I got my question from earlier because yeah. I heard I heard this trembolone story, and it's like, oh, if you are, if you, if you are, you're telling me less protein, yeah, you you know, you can, it, But if you took more, you're building more muscle. Less, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, this this trembolone, the story about the trembolone is basically the drug is very very strong, but neurotoxic, so it actually alters your. Um, neuronal pathways so it drives people nuts and a lot of people have literally like well a lot of them like kill their wife etc I don't know the person seriously fuck them up as well like other steroids tend not to unless you've got the personality to they're not going to give you roid rage but trend will drive you mad I know people train at trend alone yeah. and literally the story oh, that's more, trend right trend. Oh, yeah and more we'll plates, more dates. There's forums, Owen, because Owen enjoy this. More we'll plates, more dates. Together. The whole forum, basically, about We're trying to get him on the podcast. Mm -hmm. tre trend stories, like trend stories about like I've now, now I've taken trend. Now I'm gay. Now I'm gay. I've heard yeah. <laughs> there's another, oh, another really? one. There's another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my friends told me you'll love this. My friends, I was talking about trend Tim in my gym, uh, and he goes to me, he goes, yeah, well, I took trend, and basically I just already got into trannies. Then I stopped trend. I was just still into trannies. <laughs> so it wasn't the trend at all. I just love trannies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they said that on the Dan Balzarian podcast as well. <laughs> <laughs> Dabble yeah, Zero, he, he, he wasn't into it, but he like they they said something uh, about that. Yeah. Dabble Zero loves everything. He, he's an example of literally of loving loving steroids and cocaine as well. Literally, he just, he loves it. Mm -hmm. This story had a heart attack and just thought he just had tight chest and was doing more press ups. He's like, yeah, it must be a tight chest. And, <laughs> <laughs> and just and again, the coke will get rid of that and just took more coke. Oh my god! Brilliant. Yeah, he had a heart attack. Wow. So he's fine then. He just. Well, right. it was really fine. He had a heart attack, but then yeah, it was, I don't think it was a severe heart attack. Yeah, yeah. okay. He's, yeah. he's doing a pretty light dosage, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I mean, the way he like eats and drinks and does that, well, I think he probably trains hard. But yeah. just because the way he behaves, you think he doesn't. But then again, like he must be doing. I mean, he's very rich and very handsome and bearded. But the thing is, it should as well that he and I'm bearded, sure, the beard yeah, makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, of course, exactly. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think I was going to say to you, he, might, he, he probably is not doing a light dosage. I'd imagine. It's not like him. Do you think he's going to be not extreme? 
what? Uh, listening to this, po- like, oh, so I, guess, okay, light, right. I listened to the podcast and he said, like, it's it's pretty, he said it's pretty light in comparison to like some of the, like, well, yeah, we'll be all right. Since that side was like 300, 500 milligrams, he probably is doing something like that as well, probably yeah. not something heavy because I've known bodybuilders. Well, this is the thing actually in bodybuilders and gyms. I've seen bodybuilders and gym, local gyms, like absolute dog shit, and they're taking mass amounts of drugs. And then yeah. I've, then I know personally, an example actually would be Ben Pakulski, who's, um, was, uh, he was top 10 in Mr. Olympia, he only top five. Yeah. And um, he stayed at um, one of my friend's gyms, I won't say who it is, but very, very famous PT gym. And he was getting his drugs from, he was competing at Arnold Classic. Yeah. And he said, the dose he took would shock you how low it was. And he wasn't lying to you on, a, on an Instagram thing. He said, I was getting his drugs from him. And he goes, literally was barely taking anything. And wow. this guy was 300, 330 pounds and five foot 10. 130 kilos shredded just because he fucking trained properly yeah he trained properly, exactly, properly, exactly. and he's right, definitely gifted and trained and it ate properly exactly that's a classic thing people like especially in the jiu-jitsu community it's sad to see people like oh he's on the juice like yeah maybe he's on the juice but like if you do things properly you could probably still beat him correct to, to, to a degree what, what example was i came back to oh. rogers i was tra- training for really hard i think i was training with you you actually and you guys right, separately from rogers and i remember came back and just smashed shit out of everyone and you know what the first question was wow what are you taking right what about where I'm training, which it is as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is another question I'm taking as well, but <laughs> that's a good, good point as well. But yeah, but that's the first thing people get, get onto, don't they, before training properly. We, yeah. If you have good technique, it will outweigh that anyway. Crazy. Oh, was, oh, was a nice example of that going to NECC. Yeah. When we started training, we're like, let's make you as strong as possible. You shouldn't get, don't get bullied for your weight class. Yeah. And we did that. Well, yeah, wait, yeah. What weight class do you think you'll do next time, Owen? Just again. Yeah, again. Yeah, probably he, too he, hard to get to ninety nine. Realistically, he, you, you, <laughs> I was saying going back like down again. It wasn't going either going down or staying the same way. It was like ninety nine. I love how you decided that. Literally, bro, he oh, was yeah. 90, 90, almost ninety two kgs before he went to. Bro, ACC. you know who looks fucking thick as well, and their yeah. physique looks pretty good too. Is Silvio, <laughs> bro? Do you remember? You can't like, <laughs> Charles. I'm not joking. It was on. Was on. Um, Will Rogers. What's on? No, it was yes, yes, yesterday wasn't Is he it? looking better? Covering the getting well, two, day, two days ago, Friday, Friday, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday. Literally, better. bro, he was just like we were training him, bro. He was so dense. Literally, yeah, I, he's, 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 he's always dense. Yeah, but he was like a wall. I literally, he was. Well, he always, he wasn't always dense. He's like ninety six now. Yeah. He was like eighty five when I first saw him. Literally, he, I was in so but I think he's on top. And generally, I grabbed his tricep and I was like. All I could think of was how thick his arm was, and then he already passed. But I literally was still holding. He passed my gun. I was just still holding on to him like this, feeding how thick his arm was. <laughs> still in holding dream, him. Dreamscape. And, yeah, in dream, dreamscape. Literally going like, <laughs> imagine, but imagine being his 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 girlfriend. How protected you'd feel holding him at night. How oh my warm. God. Oh, well, what about what about Sandra? Sandra. Sandra. Yeah. Sandra. Know, yeah. Sandra. No, but Sandra. S- Sylvie fucking destroys Sandra though. I know, but yeah, I know, yeah, but, it's but mad seeing that. That's but, crazy. But that is crazy. But also, how deep. Sandra's voice, but also he has oh that. Germs. Yeah, he's exactly. You're so strong, but his hands, his hands like fucking gloves. Yeah, literally, you just feel. I would <laughs> yeah. say this Mitts. is another question for you. Mitts. Shout yeah, out to Sandra. Sa- 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 Sandra. Is, if people who don't know what you were talking about, Sandra is European like a, champ. He's no, no, he's, he's yeah, he in he European he champ. He murdered everyone literally. He's as well. first, right? Yeah, he, was, yeah, yeah. yeah, he smashed everyone. No surprises there. He's a um, six foot three Jordan, Georgian, Jordan, not Jordanian, Georgian. Georgian. Oh, uh, fella. Jordy. He's about 110 kgs. He's doing his MBA as well at the moment. He's clever as well. It's yeah, just crazy. Smart. Yeah, very smart. But yeah, that's the thing. I mean, genuinely, I, I think the most important question of the whole podcast would be like <laughs> Sylvie or um, or Sandro. Who would you feel more safe at night with by a, um, a log, 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 um, log cabin? Well, Sylvia. we know that Sylvie has thrown people off mountains before. <laughs> yeah, that good story. Uh, his, that good story. It's a funny story he told. And us. then Sylvie and me, it's, um, only me just standing there going like, what? Isn't that murder? <laughs> Isn't that murder? Isn't that murder? Isn't that murder? Yeah. Just, he just murdering someone. Yeah. yeah. Just didn't he didn't really elaborate on it, but. Yeah, just leave it there. Yeah. That was a weird yeah. story. Uh-huh. This, yeah. is a, this is a weird story for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed, and once we left, Owen both looked at each other and went, Was that normal? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah, definitely Sylvia, I suppose so as well. Yeah. But then, then Sandra might make form far more financially secure this NBA. <laughs> 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 he's coming home with a big paycheck pondering yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll leave on the note just pondering, pondering yeah. <laughs> right, right in and tell us I wake, I wake up in the middle of the night in sweat go I'm not even sure yeah. I'm not even sure who I want the back of Sandra's hands are so hairy though that you know that he'll 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 go chop wood for you, etc. If needs be. <laughs> if, it, if needs be. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, that was he's so good. Yeah, man. yeah. Uh, oh, he's so he's strong. So, so strong. Yeah. So strong. I don't believe. Yeah, yeah, I don't believe it. I don't yeah. believe. How are you doing this? 
Yeah. That's actually perfect. Thanks. That's really good. That's actually yeah. perfect. Thanks. Thanks. No worries. <laughs> doing this. It's perfect. It's perfect. Unbelievable, Owen. Yeah. So thank that, you mate, so much. Thank you. Uh, generally, thank you for asking the podcast as well, literally. Uh, that, that was, it's right. been fun. That's Just chatting right. to your friends, talking nonsense for... Yeah, yeah, five hours. <laughs> I think. How long has it actually been? Well, it's an hour and a half. It's an hour. Oh, no, no, that's that's we, we should wrap up there. Yeah. Do, so, what, so, what do you offer? Do you offer anything online, or do you? Do you yeah. So you basically, so our, so our gym um, offers um, online training and personal training. Our gym, which does obviously bespoke dieting and training. Um, so transformation studio, but a lot of guys are lifestyle. So a lot of bankers, lawyers, etc., wanting to be in the best shape of their life inside and outside the gym. And all us know if your training and nutrition is going well, every other aspect of your life is going well. So get in contact with us at www.bodytransformationlondon.com. Email us at info at btxlondon.com. And my PA will get back to you, not me. Yeah. <laughs> but she'll pretend to be me. And she doesn't even pretend to be me anymore. She won't even lie, literally. Beautiful. Um, James, no, it's, it's been an honor to have you on here. Thank you so uh, much. Thanks for being honest. And we had some great conversations. Yeah, it was good, actually, as well. Guys, remember, if you want to see more of this podcast, you need to like, subscribe to us on YouTube and Spotify. Please rate us as well. Yeah. Remember, the more, <laughs> they're going downhill, the, aren't they? The, 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 high, the higher the rating, the better the guests. <laughs> <laughs> obviously the ratings have been awful <laughs> ratings are yeah. rock bottom <laughs> it's more of a threat than an encouragement <laughs> do it guys that always we'll works guess who we'll like get on threat, next yeah. <laughs> 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 threat. james welcome to the uh charles owen experience thanks for coming on thank you very Great. much cheers thank you guys